government of everything. No, that, 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 so the New England town meetings. Yeah. The, the, by the way, these town meetings really were the engine, one of the, the big engines of the American Revolution, which then threw off the British yoke. These, these town meetings had this very democratic spirit. These, these basically Englishmen. They weren't that different from us, really, today. Um, they, yes, they, they had their traditions eroded over time. But their traditions weren't eroded by allowing Catholics to come in or allowing black people to come in. I wasn't saying the reason it was really, why. Sorry? I wasn't saying the reason why, I'm just saying they eroded. Well, they eroded. It wasn't because they allowed more people to come to the community. They eroded because of the United States became much more centralized over time, especially like around World War II time or World War I. The United States became, like, right now it's a kind of republic of republics, basically, today. It's a federal republic. But it became much more centralized during during constant warfare with when did other they countries. Lose their communal, uh, I, like I said, it got it, when the United States became more centralized. A lot of these local town meetings lost their power. It, Something similar happened in Britain. Basically, like you know, Britain used to be very decentralized. A lot of there was a lot of power to town, you know, councils and so on. But then under Margaret Thatcher, she centralized a lot of the power into her own hands. She often went, you know, she didn't really pay so much attention to local councils anymore. The same process has happened. And I, I don't think that bodes well for democracy. We have so much power in the hands of the Prime Minister. I think it's quite good. The English system is quite nice because we have so, at least in theory, we, we separate power into so many different bodies. The judiciary, the, the civil service, it used to be the church as well. All these different bodies would have a bit of power. So it's kind of spread out a bit. Now I see it, it's more and more it's being centralized into the hands of big business and the parliament. And that's where power seems to be coming more and more into. Um, I don't know if that's a very good thing for Britain. I think I would like to see these these different aspects of British culture have more say in how Britain is run. It's just my feeling. You might think I'm completely wrong on this, but it's right. It's what not I, necessarily I, wrong, but if you if you set up a system and describe that system as simply working in a certain kind of way, then that's an idea. That's there. It's an idea, yeah. But there's, and which is fine. And I don't think people are critical if, if there was a system that worked. It's just that I think that the reality is that evidence shows that those kind of things do not work in the long run and in, the, and in a large scale. I don't think so, there's any evidence to say that whatsoever. No, I, I, I say there's no evidence. Just, just because... Oh, you mean you, you, you're agreeing with me? To that, uh, that it doesn't work. That his idea does actually work. And there is no evidence saying that it doesn't actually work. Okay. Give me the evidence that it does no, work. No, in in this is actually scale. not how... This is not, I, in my opinion, sir, I don't think this is how you judge an idea. It doesn't make sense to judge Christianity by the way Christians have behaved. Or how they've tried to put Christianity into practice. No, I'm not it's better to judge Christianity by its own internal logic. It's the same with communalism. It's the same with any idea. It's better not. It doesn't make sense to say, well, where has this been tried and where is it? Had, where has it lasted over the long term? Because yeah, you're not going to find any. There's no model of communalist society. But it's still a good ideal. Just because well, it hasn't been tried out yet doesn't mean it make it a bad ideal. Well, you're saying it has been tried Can I answer this question? Sorry. Uh, I think uh, in Israel, they did have a very good model of communal ownership. And it was very successful. A different kind of communalism. The kibbutz, some of the kibbutzim in Israel were very social. They were basically socialists. They were they, had, very they shared successful. everything. Yeah, I mean, and they did work very well. I mean, I read somewhere that, um, or I think I saw it in a documentary. These, these communities in Israel were so successful. They were so peaceful. Was sharing everything, you know, ha having a bicycle was considered a luxury, so it was like that's the kind of society it was. They would send, you know, very violent criminals from other countries to go to these places to learn how to be peaceful. Violent criminals would spend time in the kibbutz to learn how to, you know, relate to their fellow human because there was a solidarity. And it's very, I, I think it haunts my imagination. I think about these kind of communities, and they're not perfect, they're not like the perfect world. When I think about where I live in London, where it's so quiet and nobody talks to each other, right? it's like. Well, I, some people say we're in a communally desiccated city. There's basically not much going on in terms of community. I mean, that's why I love Speaker's Corner. And that's why I love churches. I'm not a religious person, I'm an atheist. But I think churches are a great place for people to come together and have that spirit of community. That's ridiculous. And we don't have that's, to much that. I'm not religious, I've heard but from I love both the church. I've heard from both of you. Can I have yeah, a That's a ridiculous statement. All right, we've, we've got we your point of view. Have, we don't like is coming less and less important and we don't go to church every Sunday most time. I'm an atheist too, but it's a good point. Yeah. It's kind of I'm an atheist, but I think religion has declined for the wrong reasons. I don't think religion has declined because people are becoming more like you know logical or whatever. I think it's declining because of two things: the media has taken the role of 
like you know worship. You have these celebrities who are worshiping now. They're like the new gods. They're the new saints. That's what's happening. On the other hand, you've got like psychotherapy and psychiatry. Psychiatry is kind of taken over the old. What's tried to, anyways, take over the old religious. You know, system and it's not worked. Not, neither of these things are really apt, apt uh, replacements for that religious sentiment. We are, we are You're, lacking in community in a way. You are a pseudo atheist. That's what you've just described and labeled. That's, that's not really at all. He's recognizing that there are positive aspects to the community around the Christian. There's positive aspects to a system which represses and causes mass repression and genocide across the world. Oh, because they've got a pretty church, the church that, of means, that? that means they're okay because they've got a pretty quite church. Often, quite often the Church of England has been on the front line to stop this kind of thing. Yeah, in your, in your idealistic world view of the church, no, I think the, the church, 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 church Williams, I, is the yeah. forerunner, the frontrunner, sorry, of mass uh, ownership of other countries through the means of violence and through the and just to re Absolutely. steal the resources. Do you know that the never heard of Africa? The facts don't matter. Heard of South no, America. not in Africa. Do you know, during, never heard in, during, the, during the heights of the British Empire's power yeah, in Africa, there was a con British imperialist living in, you know, or working in parliament and so on, civil service. They often looked very sideways at religious people. They weren't really sure about all these missionaries going out. That's because, convenient. Yeah, no, they did. There was a, no, I, I, I always thought that, yeah, the missionaries were just basically another form of imperialism. But I found out there was this, if you actually look at history itself, you look at what people were saying back then, there was a lot of tension between the missionaries on the one hand and then the army and the navy. Often they would, the missionaries would try and provide a buffer between native people and the banks and so on. It did was, that buffer manage to stop the genocide in Africa? No, not no it didn't. They're there so that people like the you can go... The genocide must have been worse. It could have been worse. You're there to say that the people, oh look, Christianity is actually good because one person popped up and said, actually, this is a bit dodgy. Did nothing. Still, that African country was. They always do nothing. For example, they I did always the, do nothing. Consider, That's consider, consider the great priest Bartholomew de la Catas in uh, from from Spain, I believe it was. He, was yeah. he went to Spain, and he, this was in the 1500s. He saw the horrible way the Spanish the Spanish Empire was treating native Indians there, and he wrote about it very eloquently. And he tried to Sorry, he tried to provide Indians. a written defense for this. Saying, well, I think this was I think this was in the Amazon, like in the on the Thank eastern. You. He said, he said it's awful. They're like burning them alive. They're, they're hanging them upside down. All kinds of horrible things. Killing them, killing pregnant women. He gave all these. He describes it very well. I really recommend it. Yeah, he describes it, but it didn't stop the church stealing all their gold. That still happened because one person went. Oh, that's a bit dodgy. He ne that never changed the system which legalized mass genocide. And you're saying because one person popped up and said, "Boo, a bit dodgy." You're justifying the actual system created. I've got a, that, have a bit more of a nuanced view of this. I don't that think is so biased. I, again, I'm, in a, I'm a very committed atheist. I don't, I don't see pseudo atheist. I don't see. It. Well, you can, you can believe that if you want. That's fine. I do. I'm a believer. But um, I just see the value in the church. I think of the Philippines. More, let's think of a more recent example. In the 1980s, there was a dictator in the Philippines, Marcos. It was a Marcos regime, very repressive, and the Catholic Church was a kind of buffer between him and the people. They didn't manage to solve the, all the problems there, but it managed to create a sense of space outside of the state. Remember, like in a society where the state runs everything, there's not much room for action. But when you have churches and trade unions and, and gardening associations, places outside of the space of the state, then you can start to organize action. I think of the black, the, you know, the civil rights movement in America. Without the churches, there was no space for these, a lot of these, you know, uh, black activists to meet. Churches provided that space for that resistance to build up. Now, what happened in Mar with Marcos? I'll finish. The, the, there was a huge demonstration that traveled to the Philippines capital, Manila, to demand the deposition of this dictator. And what happened was, was that the army came out, and the army were about to shoot these people. Do you know what the Pope did? The Catholic Pope at the time, he sent out a message by radio, and he said it to all the soldiers, put down your guns and join the people. And they did. They used their power for good. They used their influence to try and get the soldiers to join and the regime fell, the Marcos regime fell. Things in the Philippines are not perfect today. They're much better than they were when there was a dictator. What we are here and heard in the last five minutes is the pseudo-atheists stand up for religion and promote religion above his own so-called atheism. This is what hypocrisy is. That's the very definition of hypocrisy. Hang on. And, and more than that, I mean, he is biased. 
I believe that you come from a, uh, a Catholic background. That's right, I do. So he's biased to look upon his own infrastructure in a positive light. He never designed that into his own mind. That was educated and designed into his mind so that one day the so called he'd come and call himself an atheist and yet preach about how brilliant religion is. I think, I think it's not that, that is it's definitely not like that. I don't think people agree with that. I think you I don't care if you agree with it or not. That's what just happened. Well, I think what he's Let's not keep it personal. Can we just keep it not personal? I'm afraid that. That's all right. I think what you started by saying is that the community, small communities, the churches in small communities had a function that you that you feel had some positive role. Because I'm not saying all these different communities should be isolated and not talk to each other. I think we should have confederal relationships. But my argument that you you didn't really argue is that if this if this is a good idea, stand alone as an idea. At, um, the idea community. of communalism, the idea of directly democratic local assemblies that own all the land and the property of the neighbourhood okay, right. and then make the decisions about it through face-to-face -face okay, Anyone can have a good idea, you can describe a good idea, you can describe, I know we've got a new system where everyone respects each other and uh, that the whole world would be much better. And, and it, the reality is that, you know, that's a good idea. No, it's whether it can be put in place and, and that's no, very, very right to be concerned about this because ideas are beautiful because they're so pure. The challenge is then to try and put them into practice and then you get your hands dirty and it's very difficult. But I'm not denying I, I, that at all. I can't quite even see a route between Okay, let me give you a then. route. I'll give you a route. So one thing that Murray Bookchin, the guy who came up with this idea of communalism, said, one way to start is start a study group. Just meet with your friends in a neighborhood and talk about these ideas, debate them, reason about them, ask questions, read a book together about the ideas. Once you've built up a bit of knowledge and a bit of an interest in the local affairs, start to take part in the local community. Go to meetings of the church, of the city council. Go to you know, make your voice heard, and then eventually run, 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 run candidates in elections. I believe this. This is where I'm not an anarchist. Anarchists believe you shouldn't run candidates in elections. I think communalists are different on this. They believe that. You should run candidates in local elections, not never the state. Because the state is just too far away from people to really have a meaningful relationship, even elected representatives. But run candidates at a local level. And then put those put those assemblies into practice. Use the power as an elected member of a local council to create these spaces for direct democracy. Create rooms where people can meet and debate about the issues of the day. That's that's a real political education, I think. When people not, meet face to face. That's not, on, not on chat rooms. That's not the route. I mean that's maybe one step. That's What's one very whole, vague route. route. Now, now remember something, I'm not I'm not you, so I don't know your life and what your 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 uh, abilities are, capabilities are, what you can do. That's why I don't want to I don't like coming to the speaker's corner and telling people how to No no no, I'm just thinking it's, you've got it's, an you idea. You don't know the people you're talking an to. An idea that you want to put into place that you think would make society. I just gave you one better. possible route, and you gave you gave one step, not the path. No. Well, okay, so then, then, then what then happens next, is next, next. so then okay, let's say that that happens across England. There's a lot, there's all these local councils which have local assemblies, right? Now, what would happen? Is, well, I'd like to see a kind of dual power between the state and those uh, assemblies. You have the assemblies on one hand with the real power, and then the state would have less power. It would start to rebalance. I really believe that the people should run the society, not parliament. So slowly, with a, with a kind of gradual change, because I think things have to happen gradually in England. Like we're a very old, stable society, so they can't happen like you know. They'd have to happen in a few years. They couldn't happen in like a few days. We would have this replacement of the state with a confederal democracy. Are you promoting libertarian? Yes, I'm a libertarian. I'm not a right wing. I'm not a right wing free free market libertarian. That, the word libertarian is just another word for saying uh, anti-state, basically. I'm anti-state. I believe we should have real direct democracy. We shouldn't elect representatives to make decisions for us. We should make the decisions ourselves. And I know you've had an issue with me in the past about this. I know you disagree with me. But, you know... Would it, within that com communalism, uh, would it be a capitalist... Uh, no, it'd be socialist. No, no. But with, so where would... Uh, so basically, everything that you... Uh, provide or reduce, you share. Be, as a rough rule, it would, be, it would work like this. From each according to their ability to each according to their needs. I think people should get what they need and they should give what they can. But they, I don't believe you should get what you earn. No, but, but Some people in the society, they believe, I work hard so I should get more. 
I don't think that's necessarily a good principle. I don't think that's a good principle necessarily. The point that I would make about that is. Yes, let, let, let so him speak if he wants to. Is, is I'm really talking about nuts and bolts, not ideas. Right? Well, my so, friend, so that's my nice friend I'll, leave the, I'll leave the nuts and bolts up to you. If, you are, if you're interested you in putting this idea into practice... I don't think it you, can, you ask him for his opinion all this time. Yeah. Why are you still being so shy about just saying yes or no? Because he still wants to make his mind up. You can't, let, you can't rush people. You can't you rush people. Time. No, because I'm actually wanting to ask a question. You asked me about nuts and bolts, sir. I tell you, I can't tell you about nuts and bolts. So, because the thing is, if I did that you now, failed. then I could be very... I could give you a completely wrong picture. It's better to give a general outline of what, what a good society is and then leave it up to people to I'm, put into asking, practice their okay, way. But what I'm asking is that if you've got a community, a small community like that, on a communal basis and on that socialist basis, All right, that's, no, wait, yeah. let me finish. And then that means that if you as an individual want to keep what you, uh, you produce or make, you can't do that, it's forcibly taken away from you. Um, so that's the, no, that's the nature of capitalism. That's the nature of capitalism, isn't it? What you actually can do is, you, is, is owned by you yeah. as an individual. <laughs> no, actually capitalism the, is not like... I think we've got to think about... Prop, how do, uh, people, I think, because we think about, we think about property in a bit of a strange way, I wasn't talking about property. No, but well, you're, no, you're, when she's talking about just, just now, you were saying about having things taken away and that, things that you own. Yeah. Right, we're talking about property. Let's just, let, make sure we're talking about property. Okay. According to Eleanor Ostrom, who's a Nobel Prize winning economist, she studied property and common, common ownership and stuff. She believes that property is not about your relationship between you and an object. So, for example, let's take Mr. Speaker over here with his ladder. We, we, we think of it, he says, Mr. Speaker owns this ladder. He owns his ladder. We think of that as a relationship between him and the ladder, but you can't actually have a relationship with the ladder. It's, just, it's actually a social agreement. What we've done is we've agreed that he's going to have access to it whenever he wants. He can destroy it if he wants to, he can sell it, he can do whatever he wants. It's his to choose what he does with it. That's actually a social agreement. It's a relationship between people. We've all agreed, us five here standing here, us six, that this ladder is the free use of this gentleman right here. It's a relationship between people. Let's just remember that. And by the way, you can't ever do anything by force in society. You can't force people to do anything, really. Everything is about, I believe everything is about willpower, what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do. Now, can people do things because they're manipulated to do them? And they've been tricked and they've been deceived? Yes, but at the end of the day, they still wanted to do it. So no one can really force you to have a socialist society or a capitalist society or a fascist society, whatever, whatever kind of, yeah, it always comes from voluntary agreement. And I know that's not a very widely held belief. A lot of people know they believe actually power comes from the barrel of a gun. It does not come from voluntary then consent. There might be levels of voluntary, no? Yeah. There might be levels of Sure, there might be reluctant, reluctant yeah, uh, obedience, yeah. Maybe, yeah. But it's very hard to run a society on reluctant obedience. <laughs> imagine, if, imagine if all the big businesses in Britain ran their big companies like that on reluctant obedience. They, can't, they, couldn't, they couldn't function for long if they did that. They need active at least on the, on the part of a big part of their workforce, they need active support. Although I say this, but actually I believe that most people in Britain, they go to their jobs and I don't think they're very actively enthusiastic about it. I think they're quite passive. And I think there's even quite an important minority of people in Britain who are actively trying to sabotage their jobs as well. They hate their jobs. You've got to remember that, that yeah, there's a whole range of people. Like this gentleman said, there's layers of obedience. Some people are very obedient, very actively, like, you might call them a job's worth. They might be very... And then other ones, they go to their job, it's just to feed their family, they don't really... Agree. Ultimately, there is a kind of consensus that has brought us to this point, um, in, that, in, in the way that you describe. I, I, I hear what you said about your concept. I, I, I think it's a really difficult route to get that as a consensus. It's, it's fine, but nothing worth doing has ever been easy, has it? Well, <laughs> also, just because it like, you know, may be a difficult idea to put into practice doesn't make it a bad idea. If the idea is attempted to be put into practice and, and we do a terrible job of it, well, the, idea, the idea is still fine, it's just we, did, we have to think how is it that we I think, messed I think up. if you describe it as being a good idea, that doesn't make it a good idea either because actually those little communities could become very, very problematic and they within so? themselves how so? just corrupt and, uh, and misuse. Do you not think we have corruption on our current society? But that's the difference of the balance between centralised Why would a community corrupt itself? That's a ridiculous statement. Like a cult. So you, like a cult. So you've so got a point. Like a Sometimes the communities are very isolated. They do morally start to, you know, they don't have the outside world. Do you think a community, 
that has some power will become corrupt. Well, you can say that about the world. Oh, I will say I agree with Dustin. I think what I think what what my friend is saying is he's driving at the right idea. Power doesn't necessarily corrupt, but absolute power in the hands of a very few number of people it does tend to lead to corrupt behaviour. Right and actually, I think what's a more accurate picture is not that power corrupts. Power is just power. Power is just influence. What I believe it is, is that it's corrupt people who are attracted to large amounts of power. I think it's the other way around. When Lord Axon said that power tends to corrupt, absolute power corrupts absolutely. I think what he was really saying was that it was really corrupt people that are attracted to large amounts of power running the big companies of the world, running the big parliaments. Uh, I think it tends to be more corrupt, power-hungry people. Yeah? Well, there will always be those people. There will always be those people, but in a society like a communalist society, where it's very decentralized out, very libertarian, to use an old-fashioned word, if it's very like decentralized out to loads of little, you know, then that power is dispersed downwards. That very dangerous substance is spread out among the people. That's, that's what it was, like, you know, in thousands, you know, pre-civilization. And this is what's come from it. No. But you, well, that, that's a fact. This is what's what, sorry? Well, that's ridiculous causation. Pre-civilization, you've got to try No, pre-civilization pre was very tribal. Pre-civilization pre yeah. was much more tribal. Tribal power is very complicated. It depends on the different continent that you're working with. I mean, like, find this out with anthropology that it's not always necessarily democratic. <laughs> so maybe, for example, uh, the pygmies in the Congo, they might have a very di direct democratic system. But then if you go maybe further north, or so you go to East Africa, some of the tribes there may be completely different. They may run everything from a small council of old men, and almost all the decisions are made by that small group of people. There's a huge variety among tribal institutions. They're not all democratic, they're not all centralized. I mean, it really depends on where you are. I, 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 I think the point was that you get these small communities, some can be run by, run by cult leaders, some of those communities can join together yeah. and war with the next community by them. You've got no control. I think that's the nature of society and people as it stands. But isn't the nature of society to create order and some kind of rule structure? And yes, well, we have after attempts that to unravel that. After the chaos happened. Sure, and I, I know you have people who go to war and they, they try and unravel that social structure which has been so painstakingly built up by, by mutual association and discussion and so on. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. <laughs> no, this is, again, it's a choice. It's a political choice. Sorry? We could all love each other. No, it doesn't even have to be love. It doesn't even have to be love. Just mutual respect. Basic respect. I don't want to live in a society where everyone loves each other equally. Because I, I think it's healthy that we reserve more love for the people we know better. Like our mother and our father and our sister and our brother and so on. It makes sense. But well, that, that, that basic that's love of the society. the process of war, isn't it? It's like we love ourselves more than that. Group. The process of war is to make the rich richer. Just remember that warfare has always, warfare has always been a matter of propaganda. People don't ever willingly get just go to war because it's considered a good idea, and it's like re reason and rationality. War is nearly always whipped up. It's like a whipped up frenzy. I mean, you see this in Britain, it's especially. A business. War when we, is when a we went to war before I was even born, when we went to invade Iraq in the nineties. <coughs> the Gulf War. There was a uh, the pretext was that the um, the Iraqi soldiers had been going in to hospitals in Kuwait and they've been taking babies out of the incubators and leaving them on the floor to die. This was a this was said by a young girl in, uh, and she gave this video and she, you know she interview on a video and it went out. Daughter of a Kuwait. It later family. turned out that this woman this daughter this, yeah this girl was the daughter of a member of the Kuwaiti royal family. It was completely a manufactured video. There was no evidence that the Iraqi soldiers were doing any of that. Absolutely none. And yet, the United Kingdom joined with the United States, and they invaded and they attacked Iraq. And at places like Mutla Ridge, they were killing soldiers that were running away, even Iraqi soldiers that were surrendering. The American helicopters and tanks were attacking them. It was a very gruesome, violent war. Even today, I believe, there are cluster bombs scattered around Iraq and Kuwait, which are killing young people there. Let's go fast forward to another war more recently, Iraq. Now, I remember the Iraq. I was, I was a very young child when it broke out. And I remember the propaganda. I remember reading about the newspapers. There was a rumor that Saddam Hussein's men were putting people into shredders. He was shredding human beings and then using their bodies to feed the fishes. This was in the media everywhere, right? Again, absolutely no evidence that this was happening. I'm not saying that Saddam Hussein was a saint, but there was no evidence that he was getting his men to put uh, humans into shredders. And yet that got the British people whipped up. Some British people, not everybody, but a lot of British people were very frightened of that. So we have to do something to stop this maniac.
Never mind that there are many other maniacs which Britain supports and funds and, and, and uh, could do something about just by withdrawing its support. But fundamentally, war is about. No, we have the official enemies on the one hand, the Saddam Husseins and the, the you know the Hugo Chavez, for example. I mean, a bit outdated. Let's think about more modern people. Assad, he's kind of boogeyman, right? But then the, the men who are just as bad, if not worse, who are our friends. We often don't even know their name. How many of you have heard, for example, of El Sisi in Egypt? He's a terrible dictator. He's got mass support from the, from the West, from Britain and America. He's killing his own people, driving the price of food up. He's, a, he's an awful, awful dictator. And yet he's considered, Egypt is considered a stable country because it does what the West wants. It keeps the Suez Canal open for oil, uh, for oil uh, tankers to go through. So he's a, that's a stable country. But then you've got Iran, which is not as bad as Egypt to live in, actually. But Iran is an unstable country. Iran is run by a bad guy, right? Because Iran isn't doing what the West wants. Iran isn't playing the game. I'm not anti-West and I'm not anti-British. I love Western values like democracy and freedom. And I love British values like peace and international law. I just want to see them put into practice. I don't want to see our politicians and our leaders talking the talk to the cameras and then going away and doing something completely different. Well, that's not, peace is not a British value, it's a human value. Peace is a human value. Britain and, doesn't And British people are human beings. Shit. And I think British people are very, I think they're... People are. They're very peaceful people. Very, people are people. I said this at Speaker's Corner no, numerous times. British people are so peaceful. If you, if someone bumps into a British right. person, the British person says sorry to them. That's how, that's how polite and, like, you know, that's Britain the kind of society we are. Right. It takes a lot of propaganda to get British people whipped up into supporting a war and, a, and violent attacks. Britain has quite horrific values. The British elite might have horrific but values. people have good we, values. We have a, you know, Britain's people not really a country. Values. Britain's not really a country. It's a club. That's how, I, that's how the historian yeah. Mark Curtis describes it. It's a club where there's a few men at the top, mostly men, they're like an old boys club. I mean, only five universities have ever produced a prime minister. Just think about that for a second. They, we, have, we have hundreds of universities in this country, and only five have produced a prime minister. They're a small club of people, and they, you know, that's, that's how Britain works. It's not really truly democratic. It could be more democratic if British people wanted it to be. I really have a tremendous faith in the British people and their desire for more freedom, more democracy. When I look at the history of this country, you blame the British people. The, the, level, of, the level of progress, religious progress, uh, progress, progress in the family. That look look at how respect. Britain used to treat Catholics. Look at how we used to treat Protestants in the 1500s or earlier than that. There's been tremendous progress since then. That British people now, they have tolerance about other religions. At least most of them, the vast majority, very tolerant people. That's why when David Cameron tried this thing of like, you know, dividing up the Muslims into good Muslims, bad Muslims, you know? It didn't work. British people were not having it. I think most British people thought it was a ridiculous idea. They're Muslims, right? Just let's just call them what they are. It's not like there's the good ones and the bad ones. You, we're human beings. Are you pro Brexit? Uh, I, I, I would like a... A, <laughs> a moratorium on that, shall we? Uh, I, I, I voted to remain. Yeah, no, no, but now, are you pro-Brexit? No, I would just like to see it happen and get it over with. Okay. Oh, and I would like to see it happen in a way which doesn't, like, make our trade relationships with the rest of the world worse. So what I'm worried about now that we're leaving the European Union is that Britain might start deepening its trade relationships with human rights abusing regimes such as Saudi Arabia, uh, Egypt, uh, Israel, uh, United States, uh, China. I'm more worried now, now that we've moved out of Europe, we're going to start mo our trade. We're going to, the, the elite in this country are going to make up for that by deepening our trade relationship with bad regimes. And I'm sure that's something you're worried about as well, Robert. Concerned about it. <laughs> I'm more concerned about Sorry, you don't have to put your hand up. Just yeah, right. Go on, yes. I just want to go back to the, uh, you say you respect the British people. Oh, I have massive respect for them. And yet you have, put, uh, in your talk right now, said that it's the reason why we don't have a fully functioning democracy is because the people haven't tried hard enough. But they haven't tried hard enough. Yeah, go on, sorry, go on. I think that is disrespectful. And I've mentioned this before in this video that that is disrespectful because the people don't have access, as I said before, to the media. And so you're saying that uh, you respect the British people is, dis uh, is not uh, actually what you do do. I, I, no, I do you have a Or do you... Can, can I answer the question? I have a question. Not, not only don't you respect them, you don't understand the framework that you live in, you're denying that as a reality. I'm making a glib statement, uh, sorry, I would regard as glib, but saying that people just need to just do it is definitely not an example of respect and understanding. George Orwell, George Orwell said that the, Engl my point. the English people, and by English he meant British, because back then England 
people whenever they said England, they just meant Britain. George Orwell said, that, I fear that the English people are asleep. And I fear that they'll only be awakened by the sounds of bombs. There may be some truth in that. Sad, sadly, like, I don't, I, I wish it wouldn't come to that, but I think British people now, they've learned from what's happened in Iraq. They've seen the devastation, and now they're realizing there's something wrong with our elite. If our elite can get away with that, without the, mass, without the consent of the public, they can go in, and now, look at Iraq today, a million people dead. A million people dead, that's a lot. My, in my mind, that's a holocaust. I consider that a holocaust. And Iran might be next. No wonder Iran is considering developing nuclear weapons, or at least they, they might be going that way. They don't want to be destroyed like Iraq was. They, Iran was destroyed by Iraq itself, just in a limited, like, small conflict there, in, a, in that part of the world. Back in the, I think it was the 80s, wasn't it? Yeah, man. I, no wonder they're worried about that in, stuff. In your Let's communist, talk about Iran, that's a good point. In your communist idea, you want decentralized power. So why would you want the centralized power of Listen, the Listen, re the reason why Britain creates terrible foreign policies, let me answer the question, and I, this answers your question as well. The reason why this country produces a terrible foreign policy to places like Iran, Saudi Arabia, I, I, the list goes on and on and on. The reason why is because British people don't actually control the decision making in the society. We don't really decide how it works. If British people, as a public, as so-called ordinary Britons, if they really ran the society themselves, I don't think they would allow this kind of behavior to go on. In fact, most of the time, they don't even know what's going on. Like I said, I, how, everybody's heard of um, you know, Saddam Hussein and all the rest. But how many people have heard of El Sisi in Egypt? Everyone back, back when I was a kid, when I was this boy's age, everyone had heard of Robert Mugabe in Zimbabwe. You'd be forgiven for thinking that Robert Mugabe was the worst dictator in Africa, when actually all the way up in uh, all the way in northwest in the uh, in Nigeria, it was a far worse dictator running the society there with British help. But we don't we don't remember his name, do we? In fact, I can't even remember his name right now. I think if people were given the opportunity to make decisions, they would learn how to make decisions and they'd eventually make better decisions. Think about this young boy right here, right? His dad is not going to give him all the responsibility just yet. But as he gets older, your dad, his dad is going to give him more and more responsibility. And then as he gets older, he's going to experiment. He's going to make mistakes and he's going to learn. And he's going to, some of the advice that his dad gave him is going to be good. Some of it's going to be bad. He's going to have to make that judgment. That's about being a man. Now, that's what it's about. That's what it, that's about being British as well. Very, British history is very much the case. It's very much the history of ordinary British people growing up, taking more and more power, right? Growing more responsible. It's, it started with an absolute monarchy under, under uh, Charles and James, Stuarts. And then we had a revolution and we took some of that power down so that Parliament has more of the power. We get a little bit more dispersed. And then now I believe the next step is to take that power from Parliament. It's, it's a gradual progression. It's very much the history of uh, is it to give it to the European democratization. Union, to the people? Because I don't understand why you're supporting more centralized power when your concept is decentralized. I'm not supporting more centralized power. But no, remaining. Ah, it's complicated. The EU, it's very tricky. Yeah, it's a very, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a conflict. The EU does actually safeguard a lot of our interests, right? On things like you don't trust the us. Sorry? You don't trust the the British or the UK to to safeguard our own interests. Back to your. I don't, I don't want Britain to be a province of the American Empire, and I don't want Britain to be a province of the European Empire. The UK don't make the rules. The rich made the rules. That's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing that really gets me annoyed. People say this. It's about our sovereignty. And then you have to, we have a constitution, you can read it. You can read Acts of Parliament, you can read the we don't, famous. England does not can, have a yes, we do. You can read the legal theorists and they'll tell you. We have the random most important, of paper The most important principle no of our constitution, constitution the most important principle of our constitution is sovereignty of parliament. He's not, it's not the people, parliament. Is what I don't so all these people who say this, we don't have sovereignty. sovereignty. We don't have sovereignty because Europe is running things. Well, neither do we have sovereignty. Even if we left Europe, the British people don't really have control over the society. Well, the parliament does. That was Parliament's right when they when they defeated the king but there is no in the civil war the and they they created a new order. That was their order that they came out with. You parliament really runs the things. You, says the man, it never answers the question. But I'm not standing. The Queen is a. She's a constant. Still, you are guilty as charged. I, I, still I, I, as guilty as charged. I haven't given you the job as a judge. I don't care. <laughs> you proved yourself to the crowd. <laughs> You prove self guilty. Don't criticize another man. We're, we're a you don't even do it yourself. I'm it's a bit more complicated. And a constitutional monarchy is a very stable.
system. Floating in with that one. Because what it does is it takes all the ceremonial aspects of state life and it keeps them in one place, the monarchy. And then everything else, all the boring stuff, gets done by elected representatives. So in that way, it's actually, I think it's not a bad idea. I've got no issue with the Queen. I really, you know, Brit so many British leftists, they get so hurt up about the Queen. And they talk about the monarchy. And yes, okay, sometimes Prince Charles, maybe he interferes a little bit, lobbying about climate change, about badges, or whatever so it is. So as an atheist, you don't have a problem with the royalty? No, I just have perspective. As an atheist. I like to see where the real power is in this country. Pseudo atheist. The real power in this country is not with the monarchy. And I don't even really think it's with the monarchy. The monarchy is the head the real, of the church. The real power in this country is in the city of London. Let's be honest. That's where the real power is. It's with big business. It's with the lobbyists. It's with the church. It's with the public relations institutions. It's with the advertising companies. It's with the media. I like what Owen Jones described Britain as. It's a mediaocracy. The media is really the kingmaker in society. It used to be in the past, like all these other institutions, like the Church of England, the monarchy, uh, the army. All these other aspects of British life were important. Nowadays, the real, most important institution is the media. And the media, the media is mostly privately owned. If you look at it closely, the rich who you describe still exactly own exactly what they own then as now. The people you oh, described very different, my literally friend. owned it. England, England has changed a lot. I, I, I didn't realize this actually, but when I sat down and I read People's History of England England by A.L. Morton, really recommend it. It's a bit you dated. You believe that? He, he, you you realize the journey this country has gone on in the last the 200 years has been dramatic, really dramatic. The reality is the rich still own the army. The reality is the rich as you're about to own the National Health Service. The reality is the rich own parliament by paying them off. That's always oh, been so the case. They don't pay them off. And it is the no, that, we think no. lobbying is. No, we're not a actually fancy that word I just made up. Yeah, lob or is lob lobbying is actually a billionaire owning a government that we should own. It's literally right now, Kai, uh, speaker. It is literally right now, speaker. Mr. Mr. Audience, I heard something to what you're saying here. The problem is with lobbying, we don't know who's lobbying. That's the big problem. No, the thing about Europe, at least in Brussels, you can see who's trying to influence decision making there. If, for example, the Coca Cola company wants to lobby Brussels to change the regulations about fizzy drinks, maybe they want to make fizzy drinks cheaper or something, I don't know. Then we can see that. It's the same in the United States on K Street, the famous street in Washington, D.C. You can see whoever's trying to influence the federal government. Can you do that in Britain? Can we say the same about the UK? We have no idea who's trying to influence Parliament. It's not, it's not like you can just buy an MP. In the past, you could buy an MP. So it's not like that anymore. So you were asked about more centralization, exactly that. that you need more centralization no, I, and transparency. More transparency, if you've got lots more centralization. More democracy is owned by the rich. I would like to see more lock, lock, stock, and barrel uh, speaker. You don't know how corrupt those small MPs are. I would like to see more transparency. I think, tra I think secretiveness is very un-British. I think it's a very un-British way of doing things. I think Br British governments used to pride themselves on being very open and very like transparent. When? Well, during the Victorian period, there was a move away from like very secretive, corrupt governments to having a system where it was you were elected, you weren't like chosen just because you brought your seat in Parliament. But yeah, it was always the same people in power still. Yeah, listen, I know they were racist and they had slaves, and I know I'm not saying they were great. But it was a bit more You're transparent. Was never with that. That is it clearly was, at least in theory there was this value for, for transparency. In theory. But now there's so much secrecy in the British state. Like, for example, do you know that there are six, like, shelves of files in Whitehall, all about Zimbabwean independence? And no one has seen those files. No historian has seen that. There is all this information about how Zimbabwe became a separate country. And no one has seen that. No one knows anything about that. MI6 wasn't even considered a real organization for the 90s. No, no, like, John Major acknowledged that it was a real... That's how secret our, our society is. I MI6 it, and MI5. MI, MI6 and MI5. MI5, 6 they is coming. Even, they haven't even. No, no, no. The. the um, what's it called? The. Uh, counter. What's, what's the police one? Oh, uh, they're, very, they're quite open. But MI, you know, MI6 hasn't published a single page of a single file of any of its documents. MI, MI5 has published one or two. It's like the European Union. No, my friend, I have to tell you, it's not like the European Union. It is. They don't do their accounts. Com do let's, let's compare that to the CIA. If you want to find out, for example, my country, I'm from South Africa. Nelson Mandela was basically imprisoned because of a, a CIA agent. And this was reported on in the BBC. You can read about this. It's in the BBC, in The Guardian, you can read about it. Nelson Mandela was on the way to Durban, where I was born. And he was, um, he was disguised as a chauffeur. And there was a, a CIA agent who had a tip-off, and he knew that that's where he was going to be, disguised as a chauffeur. He tipped off the South African... Uh, 
uh, security services and they caught him. Now, you can ask the CIA about this today. The CIA are proud of this. They're so open. The CIA, if you want to find out anything about what they've done, like, you know, all the coup d'etats they've been involved in. Do you know what they said? They asked, someone, someone, I think it was someone in the BBC, they asked the CIA, did you, did you get Nelson Mandela arrested? And the CIA said, yes, not only did we get him arrested, it was our greatest coup. <laughs> Maybe it's this more American, like, open brashness. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But think, compare that to Britain, where we don't even have a single page of a single document of anything MI6 has ever said. <laughs> That's remarkable. We don't have... There's six, there are six boxes or six uh, shelves of files or something on Zimbabwe. We have no idea what happened there. That's amazing for me. Right, we, recently, recently what's just happened is, I read this on the news, loads of files about the Sri Lankan civil war have been destroyed. The, Brit the British government destroys a lot of its files as well. That's really important. That's a really, that was a terrible conflict that went on for 30 years. Britain had a very big role to play in it. Britain was funding a lot of the, it was selling arms to the governments there. It was training up their men. And, see you, take care. It was training a lot of the soldiers in Britain. But we don't know how it started. We don't know, we don't know what Britain's role was in the beginning of that war. There's no transparency in Britain. My friend, compare Britain to Germany. Is that a joke? Let's, no, no, no. Let's, let's actually compare Britain to Germany. Germany. Germany has half the arms trade that we do. Half. Britain is the second biggest arms dealer in the world after America. Right? We saw these weapons of death and destruction all over the world. And there's no there's no sort of the consequences for young people or for anybody who's on the receiving end of this violence. violence. Germany has a much more healthy economy than Britain, and they don't sell as many weapons as we do. Hardly any compared to Britain. They sell about half the amount we do. Their army, their army is much more than Britain's. And they actually have more of a reason. When they think about it, they're closer to Russia. You think they would have more of a reason to have more of a stronger army. But they don't. So I don't think there's any reason in this. No, 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 but I'm, I'm agreeing with you that the reason why Germany's uh, got more wealth, more citizens or whatever, is because they don't have to fund a huge army that's sitting there doing nothing. You're talking about NATO? No, the British uh, weapons and arms trade, uh, the, uh, the army itself. Yeah, I don't think the... I mean, what, what are the threats to the UK right now? The, do you know, according, according to the, their own, by their own account, the British elite almost see no threats to this country. At almost absolutely none. Apart from the working class. Some, yeah, that's what they're, they're, one of the, that's one of the their main, greatest one of, threat. One of their main is the way the working class is the elite. One of, one of their main Great enemies is not even the working enemy. class. The working class is no longer a threat. Thatcher just, she did, Thatcher just dispatched the working class in like one, one about two or three years. But they are threatened by the public. They, I, I believe the British elite does see the British public almost as like an enemy within to deal with. Kind of like how Thatcher saw the miners, you know, the workers in the mines up north. I think they see them as this enemy. So that's why they use all this propaganda to try and convince us to go to war, to go to, to, conf to conf you know, to fulfill their aims. Which is why also the elite send working class people to go murder other working class people in other countries so they deal with both problems simultaneously and profit from the murder of the working class of them murdering each other. That is the definition of war, we don't have by to make, the way. We don't have to make money from weapons like this. Right now That's in Yemen, exactly what happens. Right, look at Boris Johnson and look at Jeremy Hunt. They're, not that, they're really not that different. Like they, on, on the issue of Yemen, for example, they, they are very, both of them are actually quite extreme in how much they support the British attitude towards Yemen. They are happy with Britain selling weapons, not only selling weapons to Saudi Arabia to use against Yemen. They are actually allowing Saudi warplanes to come and refuel and restock in Britain and get repaired. They're servicing the planes that Saudi Arabia is using to bomb, destroy Yemeni people with five different types of British cluster bomb, let me add. Yemen is like the world's worst humanitarian disaster right now, but the media haven't reported on really the extent to which Boris Johnson and Jeremy Hunt the two potential prime ministers of this country, how much they've supported this horrible, horrible humanitarian disaster. Like, it's really been terrible. Boris Johnson said, he said, oh, if we don't sell Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia weapons, then someone else will. That was his attitude. And then Jer I think Jeremy Hunt said something like this. He said, Jeremy Hunt said, we need to pursue a political solution to this problem. As if Britain is not involved actively in this war. As if we're somehow a neutral bystander looking out from, from the side. I mean, it's amazing. In fact, I believe even British soldiers have actually fought in Yemen. 
uh, I think it was the Times or the Daily Mail or someone came out recently and they found out that there were actually SIS soldiers fighting in Yemen without the permission of Parliament. Not even Parliament's not even respected as an institution, really. Like, if they're willing to. I mean, what's the point of having a democratic debate about something if you're just going to send soldiers somewhere and they're not going to ask the permission of Parliament? I think David Cameron did the same thing in, in Syria as well. David Cameron sent SAS soldiers to Syria. He never asked any. He didn't ask the permission of any MP. He didn't ask Parliament at all. He just sent them there. Is that really democratic? I don't think that's democratic. What is democracy? Democracy is an idea. It's, a, it's an ideal. What's your ideal? It's an ideal that can be put into practice. For me, democracy is when the people make the decisions in society, not elected representatives. And I, I will admit, this is not a conventional definition. Most people... <laughs> well, be William fans. Be careful, those are the flat earthers. They believe the earth is flat. Just be careful. The good yeah, thing is, though, given that... that. But democ democracy is not just about majority rule. It's not just about, oh, we all get to elect our leaders. That's, that's a republic. That's right, we could have, a, that's a, we could that's have a, Trump voting and we don't want that doing that. People, people, what, what do you think democracy is? Why do you, why do you ask? Well, Can you define it? What do you, what do you think it is? Basically, um, starts at uh, maybe a local level in your neighborhood, maybe a neighborhood council or something. And then there is uh, like a filtering and cross uh, information. But eventually, it has to come into a policy. A policy you can't have uh, 10 people. And then, the, in terms of policy, 10 people have 10 different things. Eventually, you have to have company. But you can have a democratic debate. I think policy making should go to the hands of the people. Administrative stuff, yeah, we can elect people to do that for us. But I think the British people are more than capable of making policy decisions together in local assemblies. Not only about how they run their neighbourhoods, but about how they run the whole regions, like London. How they run the whole country, how they, how they relate Britain to the rest of the world. I think British people are more than capable of making these decisions. The people decide the agenda. Have you ever been to a meeting, like, like a, a, a formal meeting with minutes and stuff? You know, there's a, there's a part of the meeting where they say any other business, and then anybody can say something. It's kind of like Speaker's Corner. Anybody can bring up any topic. You brought up Iran, you, brought up, you talk about capitalism. Anybody can bring up anything. Ah, oh, but you learn how to have good ideas through debating, right? That's how it happens. So you can agree on an idea. If, if we have two crap ideas away from what's good, we debate. And then you try an idea it is working. We're basically making an average. You do realise today is made by human beings, don't you? Today is made by human beings. And they decided that the world should be horrible and racist. Did you realise that was decided? Yeah, of slave trade was just And it was decided you know, by people Listen, who had no accountability. Do you not believe that there's general progress? I'm just saying that we should place some high value on people who are experts. Oh, I believe in experts, don't get me wrong. Yeah, those experts decided slavery was No, I believe in, no, I I believe in experts. Put value in. I think we should I have experts. You condemned your own people by that statement. You uh, condemned uh, Africa labor. and the crimes which happened. You didn't condemn the crimes that happened there. You I actually think this is a reinforced it. This, kind of, this is a kind of big topic as well. So we should be doing big topics. And we shouldn't be do frightened you, about big so topics. Since this is your letter, do you want to go up and talk about slavery? Or? Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for listening, everybody. I really appreciate your time. Well done, man. Very well done, man. Very good. I, don't, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be in a country that would elect me. So this gentleman here uh, has, in, in fact, endorsed slavery. And you do that. Not you. So, no, you, uh, you, uh, yeah. That's another subject. You've, you've just, you've <laughs> just in, made sure that slavery has happened by saying, just let the experts get on with the decision-making process and don't let the people have a say in the processes which are happening. Because the people would say no to slavery, actually. That's pretty disgusting. What did they actually say? Most, most British people supported slavery for a long time, like average, the average British person. But that was long, because long the experts time. told them. Yeah, there was propaganda. They, had, they believed that they were... Your condemning the working class is quite profound. I find a lot of working class people... Condemning? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah? And how did they get... Where did they get their education from? Was it the magical fairies that well, came down and educated them? 
or was it the super rich who owned their education system who educated them? In fact, the responsibility is, like this man described, oh, let's just give the specialists, let them get on with it, let them educate us, and then they'll educate us to make sure that slavery is okay and wonderful and perfect. And weirdly, you've actually um, endorsed slavery yourself. I guess that doesn't matter to you. Sounds a bit surprising to me, that does it. Uh, according to the uh, well, uh, genetic background, I'd imagine you'd have more uh, 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 st uh, uh, anger about the crimes which happened. Why don't you ask him? You're arguing against yourself. Because, because, why don't you because, why don't you ask him? I know what he Because believes. he said, mate, leave the elite to do the decision making processes. And the elite said, let's have slavery. <laughs> you said that. And Kyle and I. We both argue for democracy. All right, democracy, we choose the people and we make the decisions. I think he's against democracy. Make really the decisions. You're making a big extrapolation in what you said there. No, I have not. It's exactly why we have the world that we have. It's because the rich elite say, just let us make all the decisions. That's exactly why we had slavery. It's exactly why we have war and genocide. It's exactly why we have repression of the minorities in our society. It's because gentlemen like him said, just let the rich did, did make all the that? decisions. Did he, did, did he ever say that? Yes, he said the lead it to the specialists. I know what, I know and he that. meant by that the people I mean from that? who have been from private schools. Did, did and he meant that, that by that because that's who the specialists are in our country. They come from the private education system and they get to the private education system because they're rich. Yes, with one lit two words, you condemned a country. And by that, that shows you how easy it is to get people to cause absolute horrors on the world. That's how easy it is to get people to create horrors upon the world. It is with words and understanding of the definition of those words which define the reality that we all live in and are responsible of. And when we make glib statements by deferring power to those who are, were educated to have that power is the very, con uh, co uh, very start of not Mr. only Mr. slavery but genocide. Mr. Speaker, why don't you actually ask Mr. Audience what he believes? Uh, Clar clarify it, because I don't think he thinks you understood. The man can think for himself and the man can uh, ask a question if he I'm, wants. I'm, 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 I'm his advocate. I'm no, no, Kyle. <laughs> I mean, I proud. Why don't you ask him? Yeah. No, ask him. Ask me a question. Well, so if you have a society where it's based upon merit, opposed to authority or money, as you asserted, and then we place more power in the people who actually have shown empirically that they, they can perform yeah. whatever it is, whatever they're solving, yeah. then we place, so then we're saying, okay, not everyone has equal opinion, or not everyone's opinion should count for the same. Some people are experts on one. Yeah. Health, for example. Some people might believe that eating poison, oh great, yeah, like, that's fine. Obviously we know that's wrong. Why should we value their opinion as much as we value someone else's opinion? Yeah. So if you can show empirically that you can improve a society, then we should place more importance on that person's opinion, and that's how you progress a society. And do you think it's not based on money, it's not based on our oh, authority, this person is so and such, or was raised or educated in Eton, it's about what they can bring to the table. Do you think and the specialists today are uh, of merit? No, of course not. Because money gets involved, power gets involved. Uh, aristocracy, or what, like there are loads of things that are apart from merit, and that, that's that's what I want to move away from. So why did you say? Well, because you just ran away with it. I said one thing, and you just ran away with it. Yeah, you said yourself. you said you spoke. Yeah, you, you said that sentence, context, and, and I responded accordingly. Look, you started off with a straw man, and you just beat that straw man, tore it to shreds. So, so it wasn't my argument. So what sentence do you actually mean to say then? What well, I was saying, as I just said, we should place things on merit opposed to authority, so or money or whatever. So it's based on if you can provide a service or a policy or whatever and it's shown to work, 
then we should value your opinion greater than the opinion of just anyone. Because if we just average opinion, we get things like slavery, which is obviously wrong. No, if you average opinion, you don't get slavery. No, you can get slavery, is what I'm saying. Sorry? You can get slavery. So you can have 90% of the people being wrong and 1% being right. Uh, you get slavery when only the minority make the decisions of the majority. No, yes. Secret. That's where you get slavery You from. can, but you can also, it's easier no. to get slavery from following just averages. The only, time, the only merit, examples of slavery it's, it's in our history is when power is concentrated in the few. That is guaranteed to breed slavery. No, because not. power, definitely isn't. you only can keep power if you enslave others. If you give your power back to other people, then you don't have power. Do you realize when so slavery was means... abolished, it was the 1% <coughs> that saw it was a wrong thing to do? Excuse and me? then changed the opinion. I was of... coughing. When slavery was abolished, it was the 1% that believed it was wrong and changed the views of the 99%. When slavery was abolished in this country by the rich, yes. it was never abolished, firstly. Secondly, you're, you're moving secondly, the, the rich. Do you know what the rich did? They took the money from everybody in the UK to pay for all their losses of slavery. And do you know how long it, do you know when slavery was, the ban of slavery was about 200 years ago, something around that. Do you know how long it took the people of the UK to pay off the rich for their losses of owning people? It took nearly 200 years. Two years ago, we finished paying off the rich for their loss of earnings of slavery. And did slavery ever end? No, it never did end. We just had the belief to believe we were given in this country the illusion of freedom and the illusion of democracy. But out, even out of the UK, what we have is mass slavery. We have children making clothes. Chil slavery never ended. And the rich, they'll never make it end. Because they have all the power. Sorry? Slavery, in the sense that I was talking about, which was quite well defined. Pretty sure when I said slavery, everyone knew what I meant. I didn't mean the slavery that we live in now with phones and media and whatever. I meant owning, physically owning a slave. That practice. That literally that. happens in other countries it, no, right I'm now. Talking about the here. actual ownership of even children and making children. You like work. arguing other points and not mine. I'm want... sorry, I don't think, I don't agree with you. You don't... didn't even My understand what not, I said. For not, dis for yeah, not agreeing well, with you. Just say you don't know then. I think you think it's, this is called a debate, mate. Yeah, if you don't and because I don't agree don't with you. Understand, doesn't don't, mean you can start you don't need to complaining that, you know and argue that. that I don't you agree with you. Point. Sorry, what you're saying? Uh, don't you think that uh, once uh, England uh, gets away free from Europe, will be, I believe, if, I, I don't know your opinion, will be the slave of the United States, England as a country? Yeah, I mean, are you talking about uh, yeah. coming out of Brexit? Brexit yes. will mean slavery of UK to well, US. That's a very good point, very good point. The rich, they want Brexit so that they can actually complete their centuries-long uh, project of making sure that we become total slaves to them and dependent on them for any type of wealth, money or anything that would contribute to a community like education and health. That's exactly right. America doesn't give a shit about the human being. Uh, the billionaires in America don't give a shit about uh, the human being. They just want to enslave everything and everyone so that they then can get big richer. Pardon? That's a very big generalization in America. No, I said the rich, actually. I didn't just say America. I just say you need to listen a bit more, my friend. So am I expecting to say that you believe that Brexit is going to use that as an instrument by the rich in order to move things back into their power? Yes. Brexit, from the Tory point of view, has only one goal, which is to strip away power from the UK and then put that power into their hands. That's what the Tories want. What Labour want, Jeremy Corbyn, is to strip power from the people that have it and give it to everyone. That's the two Brexit, and that's what's happening right now. That's why Jeremy Corbyn is so vilely attacked right now, because he's literally saying, yes, 
let's get out of Europe, not because they don't have enough, uh, because they don't have too many rules, because they have not enough rules. We should have more rules, which means that power can be concentrated in the people of a country, rather than the rich, who not only don't really belong to a country, their taxes go off to other countries. That's the difference that's going on there. You look confused. I'm not confused. You, why are you doing all that facial stuff then? I just... Explain what that face means. It's all right. My own personal thoughts. I'll keep them to myself. I think it's an interesting point of view. Yeah, it is a very, very accurate point. Do you hate the rich? Though? I haven't said it. Do I hate the rich? Yeah. Is everything going to fall down to simplistic thoughts like that? Hey, All right. Hey, hey, you have the freedom to answer a question. I've just asked the question. I'm just, it's just a shame you ask no, no, simple questions. No, question are bullshit. Yeah, Don't go it is, for by it is bullshit, question. but I will answer it anyway. No. There you go. Okay. And so it just seems that you do have a hatred towards I know, because you want to simplify everything. Yeah, mate. No, because I'm, not, I'm a self-made millionaire from hard work. That makes him a hard-working man. Okay, so when he starts I just like said to him, billions, I don't, don't have an him issue him. with wealth. As, as Did you hear that? He, he said, asked me that question, and I said to him, no, I don't well, have just any just issue with wealth. You're using the term you rich are very aware loosely, though. What business do you don't mind me asking? Are you in what field? That's quite open-ended. If he starts earning hundreds of millions, will, will, he, <laughs> will he be in the group of people you're, you're talking about? Because no, you're using the term rich very Because loosely. being a millionaire don't that. make you rich. What makes you rich is being a billionaire. Because then you get to own countries As I said, and own media. If he becomes a billionaire, will he fall into the category of people you're speaking about? He's not. He's poor. I'm asking you, if he does, with the same if values any he holds now, human being will he fall into concentrates the power and wealth into their hands, yeah. then yes. So you so think a billion, pounds is too, a billion pounds, for example, is too much for one yeah. person? No human being needs a billion pounds, do they? No one needs it, though. You're saying that... Nobody it's... needs it. Do you know why people have a billion pounds? This is why it's just silly thinking. Do you know why you people have... The you can honestly the make a billion pounds and be a good person. The reason why people want to become billionaires and own everything is so that no one can have anything. No, they have to live that's in incredible. slavery. No, that's incredible. It doesn't make sense. What, you think that being a billionaire magically happens? Uh, or do you think a billionaire becomes a billionaire by taking other people's no, no, money? The way you're phrasing because it you don't understand the basis of a comedy. No, no, no. The way you're phrasing it implies that billionaires want to become billionaires to, be to fulfill their desire of stripping wealth from yeah. others. Yes, which that's is wrong. Is that is totally, totally wrong. Totally wrong. That's why I ask you if you hate That's rich. why, every not every every that's why capitalism that's what the definition of capitalism is. Capitalism isn't to produce efficiency and products and a better world. Capitalism's only goal is to own all the ownership of all the hard work that people do. That's what their goal is, is to own all your hard work. That's why they own all the patents. That's why the poor don't get paid. That's why the poor don't own the things that they even produce. That's why the poor don't have an education. And yet, Mr. Glib here can just say no when he wants. But yet, I've described the world. What world have you described? Absolutely not, because your world's lovely, isn't it? It's lovely. Why would you, why would anyone whine and moan? Because he's got such a lovely world. And yet, around places like Africa, there are people right now digging in mines for absolutely and get paid absolutely nothing. And if they complain, they will die. And yet, Mr. Glib over here, yeah, it doesn't really affect me. It don't affect me. And why should I really? And why should I really engage or listen when someone stands up and actually says? These things are terrible. No, you don't engage. I said, I said that it was terrible, to be honest. Actually, you're actually very happy. You're going to miss In your ideal things. society, then, would the opportunity to become a millionaire even be a potential option? Would there be any kind of avenue? I have no problems with people becoming rich. I've already described this. Well, you can't, you can't. But because you become rich doesn't mean you get to own human beings. It doesn't mean you get to repress and enslave people because you get rich. What it does mean, though, is you should be rewarded and con for contributing 
into a better society. Never a Can I ask you a never, question? Never, never, Do you never, believe never, never, that the, if the majority... Just claiming it. That's all you're capable of. You're if, full of contradictions. Oh, if the majority of the population owned those billions, that uh, is the cost of the media, you know. Yeah. They spend 10 billion in the United States, a bit less here. But if the general population owns the media, do you think that this relationship of power would, uh, uh, you know, relationship of force would be down? Yes. If Once we own the media as population. Once a human being owns their own voice, which is what owning the media is, and get to articulate that voice across a country and a world, which is the way the internet works a little bit, then things will change dramatically, which is why the billionaires own all our media, is so that you never have a voice or access to any of the tools that will change this world. Now, would it be possible to uh, make a political party whereby everybody, you know, we are the majority, everybody gives one pound and we amass such a huge amount of money as to own the media as uh, the subordinate class, you know, well, just the media of the subordinate class? That's a very interesting question. I think that is a very uh, interesting idea. Just and I think, one pound each. Why not? One pound each. Uh, I think that's very, uh, yeah, why not? But the thing is, the people in, who you put that money to, uh, collectively, must have a, a constitution and they must live to that constitution. Otherwise, they are removed instantly from power and their, their keys to power. But that constitution and the tools and the decision-making process must always be democracy and never held in one person's uh, one person's hand, because once that happens, you've lost. Yeah, because uh, I believe we should not blame uh, the powerful entity. We should blame ourselves for not owning the media. One pound each, we would own the media. Well, I disagree. Well, I don't want to. I think that's a bit unfair. I think uh, the billionaires spend a bill, a million, their millions on making sure that whatever dreams, whatever great idea people and the communities have, they instantly come in and make sure that all that is cleaned out as quickly and humane, uh, quickly as possible, as quickly that they can. That's how they stay their power. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be doing it. I'm not criticising you, I'm just describing yeah, how I, they... I was thinking that... Uh, but it's not the people's fault. media is extremely powerful. Yeah. Very, very powerful. Yeah. See, it we, helps to yeah, reinforce yeah, people's yeah. minds like his. Yeah, yeah we're still here, So, though. the way the conversation started yeah, was when we were talking about yeah, how if, we, if the elite have the power, we end up with things like slavery yeah, yeah. and various other horrible, yeah. horrific ideologies. But don't you think that if we do give power to the people as a whole, yeah. the people as a whole, let's say everyone in this country had an equal say, like, in theory yeah. it is, like, right now, don't you think we'd also end up with maybe not equally as horrific, but equally as bad ideas no. being implemented? The you don't think so? There. Absolutely not. You don't even think the potential's there? Do you know why? I think definitely through history. Do you know why that's, why that's not the case? Why? When ask because I think you're you're vastly overestimating the intelligence of the general population. No, I'm not. I think you're hugely over overestimating. No, I'm not. I actually believe well, that intelligence. most and people. Yourself, you may not be aware of something. Most, most people. Well, yeah. Everyone's interested in the current affairs. All right. When you woke up this morning and you got out of bed, yeah, and went in the shower, and then went to have a breakfast after being cleaning yourself. Did you think you'd like to repress and murder some people today? No, I'd like to think the majority of human beings don't think that anyway. Right, so you like you think the majority of the human beings don't. Yeah. But that's not hang on, exactly. that's not the only that's prerequisite. You said hang on, hang on. Hang on. No, 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 no. You just on, said the point. majority analogy. the no, majority of the people don't wake up yep. and before breakfast time want to enslave or murder people. Correct. And do you know why that thought doesn't actually articulate itself into reality because when the majority do right. 
Do you know why it doesn't? Why it didn't? Because the, the minority who do have that thought are currently holding the power. Yes. Okay. However. So therefore, when the majority no, no, do I'm take, not have with that part. given I'm the not power, with that part. they will not wake up and start suddenly thinking, "Oh, great! I've got loads of okay. power." Before breakfast, I can sign an order no. to wipe out a hit country. Me hit me up. Hit me up. I actually, My definition I, is brilliant. Okay, I could agree you know with you on that. that part. No, listen, but you're you're acting as if the only prerequisite for a group of people coming together to make good, meaningful decisions yes. is to have good intentions. Yes. That's not correct. There's a variety of other factors. And correct for you. They need to have a lack of ignorance. They need to have an awareness of current affairs. They need to have a, a somewhat decent level of intelligence, it's, in my opinion, to, to implement have, economically yeah. viable ideas and approaches. It's correct for you, though. I gave an example. It was correct for That's you. That's because you've given a layman example. One, so like did you morning. wake up this morning? That doesn't make sense. The best example. Same question to you. you did you example? wake up and think I, I'd like to enslave someone? Shall I give someone? you a better example? Did you think that? Yes or no? The only prerequisites are very. Shall I give right. You what I'd like you two to do is ask everybody you meet. You I think you'll find example. most people woke up and thought, I'd like to get to work today, do a hard day's work, maybe contribute to my community a bit, give them some energy, then come home to my family and then watch TV maybe or go on the internet and learn something. That, my friend, is exactly what the majority do think. Do you think all decisions are just, should I kill someone or should I not kill someone? Do you think that's how simple... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, do, you think, do you think all decisions are as simple as, should we kill these people or should we not kill these people? Do you uh, think that's, that's how simple it is? That's how you kill people, by making I'm a decision you, that, to kill people. Is that how simple... You don't accidentally so you end up with war, mate. Parliament? You don't accidentally shoot people, people, shoot people in the head, mate. Is what this, you do do is make a decision going, I want to do a murder. Yes, absolutely. To to decide who what do you think kill? it is? Magic fairies no, that decide what they and decide to shoot people. No, actually. Yes, there are the individuals that actually do wake up and at breakfast decide to kill people. You speak they do you exist. If you've got an issue, walk away, mate. Sure. Otherwise, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Took that very personally. Pardon? Took that very personally. Oh, I, I gave you a fair. Work, no, no. You made a silly report, uh, a silly comment. You can walk away anytime. When I give you walk away hearts. when you want. When I give you Don't moan to me about what is me. happening in, in Hyde Park point, right now. Out. Just walk away if you've got an issue. Don't moan to me. Don't bugger off and moan somewhere else if you want to moan. I'm not, I'm not I don't want to hear you moaning. I, I want to hear you complaining about what I've got to say. Yes, that's what I want to hear. Not you moaning. It is Speaker's Corner, mate. That's the definition. So You're going to get ask, someone shouting on a platform. You ask questions Welcome to the world that is right in front of you. Maybe you should pay more attention to what's happening Dude. around you. Oh, Rather than moaning a bit about me, then I have to describe the bleeding obvious to you. Well, clearly, Sorry, yeah, what are you saying? No, I, I, I get what you're saying, but I, I think it's very naive to think that if you were to put the power into the hands of the whole population, yeah. that you would end up getting a country that runs itself even somewhat successfully. I don't yeah. think that's what would happen. I think you'd get a huge amount, I, you'd get some decisions right, obviously. I, let me assume that you have a family. Yeah, I have a family, yeah. Let me assume that. Yeah. I'm not saying it's true. No worries, it's true. Then does your, let's say you have a father and a mother. Yeah. I'm not saying that's true. No let's just say that. No Did your father and mother manage to bring you up? Yeah. And, and did they manage well. to have a house yes. and put you in that house? They did. And did they manage to teach you their morality and yeah, ideas they, about the world? They did. Did they manage to do that? Yeah. Point. Point. My point is, two human beings. That's my father and mother, yeah. who I think. All right, let's ask this random person. Then your yeah. fathers and mothers yeah. that haven't done that. My parents that. could have taught Correct. me terrible values. Yeah. What's your point? Exactly. My point is that... Yes, two individuals yes. can create something okay. wonderful. Those two particular individuals, I appreciate and that. I, people and I believe that, that the, the majority UK. of parents do produce and care for those and children. That's an assumption. And that's that is where, another very that's big assumption. that's where the problem lies. And yes, I know. also believe that there the are some families right. which don't, which is why we have the uh, social workers which go into those families and help oh, them. Good. But those social workers are not helping the majority of parents. They're helping a minority, because it is only a minority. No, no, okay, but even though... You don't know any social workers, do you? No, but listen, let's say even the, 
the kids that do I have parents. I suggest learning stuff. Even the kids that do have parents, the ones that don't rely on social workers, foster homes, caregivers, oh, no, no, etc. Et there are some parents just that are not teaching their kids correctly. Yeah. So, like, and what I'm saying is, if you give power true. to the whole population, you are going to end up having some decisions made that are incorrect. Yes. But the, Factually, but there is a process. Democracy isn't just set in stone. Yeah. We you are talking about a completely discon to... concept that they, for what you're used to. Yeah. This is part of the problem. A democracy is a fluid entity. Right now, we have an entity that is stuck, set in stone. Called capitalism, if we don't agree with it, then it will punish you. That's set in stone. So, let me give you a hypothetical scenario. Please here, do. Here in England, right now, let's say we gave equal power to everybody in the country. That's called democracy. Which we theoretically live in. But. Yeah, that would be a democracy. Now, let's say that is what we lived on. Do you think it would be there would be a monarchy? This do you think there would be a good outcome from this or a bad outcome for the country as it stands right now? Not only would it be a good out, uh, outcome for a community, it would be good. Not only would it be a good outcome for a country, it would also be a good outcome for the world. No. You do know no. that people make decisions yet, yeah, right now. Yeah, and how are they making those decisions? Yeah, Based on the variety of factors in their lives, their income, their social status. Oh, no, no, sorry, people people in power. Oh, people sorry. in power. Yeah, uh, my bad. Their selfish needs and wants. And do you think that's good? I don't think that's good either. I, I'm saying I don't actually and think there is a perfect system. And do you think they got their power because they were good at their job? Or do you think they got their power because they were inherit they inherited their power through family connections. Both, both, both. definitely both. Definitely, uh, they were good at their job as a result of their inheritance yeah. of education. So it's coincidence that they're very no, no, well no, 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 inherited. No, no. The two are very much correlated. Yeah. No, course. I think you'll find that most like people. The inheritance of Eton and uh, Oxford and Cambridge. I think and their inheritance leads up, to yeah. them being good at their job, which leads to them maintaining. If that power. was the case, that is the case. If that was the case. Yeah then why do we have such horrors in the world? Well, because human beings intrinsic selfishness. Yeah. But human beings are not in charge. You've just described the rich being in charge and putting that power upon <laughs> themselves. They're human beings as well, man. Because we know that human beings are capable of making mistakes. Of course. But when you live in a tiny little world, the rich live in a tiny little, the super rich live in a tiny world, which is called groupthink, how can they ever change or understand their minds? In a democracy, people live and understand and get to grow with each other, rather being isolated in a golden gilded prison. They'll actually be free of their golden gilded prison and in a community learn to speak and understand, watch and participate in a society rather than cruelly isolatedly make decisions on a society they know nothing whatsoever about. I'll ask you one more theoretical question. Ask me all the questions you like, no worries. Now let's say people behind closed doors... Thank you for all your great questions, no by the way. Let's say people behind closed doors were given the following option, the following choice. You can either have... You can either be completely equal with the other members of your community, so the other families on your road, for example. Your household have the same income as everyone on the road, right? Or you can decrease everyone's income on the road by 10%, but increase yours by 20%. Mm -hmm. What do you think people would vote for? Behind closed doors, no one ever finds out their choice. Well, I think the when, majority of people, what do you think they would vote when for? a human being is given opportunity to hide, they're, inca they're capable of making any decision they want in that scenario. But in a democracy, that prison, that scenario, would be impossible to happen. You would have open air voting, like hands up in the, in the community, would not you? behind That's the democracy. Right, democracy okay. isn't built on now secrets. Democracy somewhere. is built on being so, proud okay. of what you say Brilliant. and do. Brilliant. And being proud means saying it to the world. Brilliant. This is actually gone against you, in a way. Hear me up. Because you're saying that, if I understand correctly, behind closed doors, you didn't implicitly you didn't explicitly say yes to my, to my question, but you implicitly answered yes, people would be selfish. I don't disagree with that. Right, okay. Now, intrinsically, you then agree that people are going to be selfish. 
This whole idea of democracy would just result in a facade. These are not people's real opinions being expressed. They would be putting them on as a show to the rest of the community. Can I, can I you, right? the, the problem is, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. The problem is, I think, I yeah, think you know, is that people are so used to being hoodwinked, brainwashed, manipulated, yeah. that they don't actually know how to come from any part of themselves anymore. That is. Humble, selfless. Selfless. Loving. You think the selfishness to be socially conditioned? Man, look around us. Yes, yeah, I talk about private school, that's yeah. what private schools, they can teach people to hate their own kind even. Yeah, true. We, 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 that's we, what we, private we've schools lost, do. We've lost our sense of self and self. In fact, we never even were given yes, the we education never given we didn't about it. what we are. And I, I, I think that's a very difficult debate. I don't you know, know I, I, do, I do as well, but one that has to be tackled because yeah, sure. it hasn't been tackled and we've left it to these, these psychos. These, these we haven't psychotic. left it, they've taken they've it taken from it. us. I agree. But they've do you, do you not think that hierarchies exist in wherever you go? Wherever Just sorry to interrupt one second. Yes, Would any of you, anybody here, you three or anyone here, like to come on my platform and to speak what? About what you just said. Oh, oh, right, right. You're All doing right. a grand. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sorry to carry on. Do you not think that hierarchies exist in whichever society you go to? Because we aren't born equal, and that's irrefutable. Some people are more intelligent, some people are stronger, some people are not. So, right, so if I can provide a service, whether it's banking or football, you power in your society, I, I will bring more to the table. Why would I want to be? I tell you, you why, know, bro. I tell you why. Less because me and you, service, me yeah. and you, live in that kind of world where, where people's status and jobs kind of matter in this illusory, yeah. fucked up world. Mm. But when we both look at someone who's suffering, we don't care. Do we? We, we just care about the person, rather. Right? We don't care about whether yeah. they achieved anything. We just look at the situation and think that needs dealing with. Yeah, we don't care about the aspiration. We don't care about the aspiration. We don't yeah, care yeah. about the suffering. Yeah, and, and, but me and you could debate on whether I feel what you've just asked. Yeah. I tell you, I think it's nonsense. I'm not a communist, I'm not a socialist, yeah. but I think it's nonsense that we, we are so caught up in an illusory mental position that we hold. Like, none of it matters, brother. None of that shit matters. I'm not saying, okay, look, look, I'm a decorator, I, I, I get, I'm a decorator. I you would want to help let, let me just say, yeah. I'm a decorator. I'm not a surgeon. Yeah. I go to a surgeon if I've got serious problems and he comes to me if he wants a pretty house. Mm. I get the exchange that we share, but that's beautiful. Everyone, Everyone's entitled to be what they want to be. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we've got to start jumping up and saying, I'm better than you. I, I'm worth more than you. No, 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 not necessarily better than someone else. Yeah. Just that you, you yourself should receive more. So you should be... Uh, like I don't, I don't, bro. I don't. I know yeah. what your question's going. I don't. I think what you're I saying is some skills in society are more valuable than others. And not yeah. only just skills, just they should be rewarded more for it. I, I think. I think. I think the reward yeah. comes from knowing. You know, like when, as a parent, when I when I do something beautiful for my children, yeah. I know. I don't expect payment. I just know. I feel it. And the same way that people should do that when they're doing surgery or painting a wall, they should have value in what they're doing, if, but not to the point where it's so detrimental. Much, say I can do something that requires so much more effort, and, yeah. Yeah. and you do something and it's just easy, and then we're then reimbursed the same. Why not feel a bit cheated? Why not feel like, oh, I've just done this you can work feel for no cheated. reason? You can feel cheated, but now we're... So wouldn't it be in my best interest to oh. ask for more? Well, as you're asking me, yeah. if you asked anybody else in this park, you'd probably get one out of eight billion different answers. This is yeah. my particular answer. The answer that what we're seeking and what we're not looking at is spiritual. I know that's just a word, a label, and it, it means yeah, lots of different things to people who are even yeah. religious, it means something. But I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about connection, right? Where me and you can connect on levels which there are no divisions. Don't get me wrong, I'm not being naive. I know there are divisions and separateness and all that in this understanding. But in my heart, I don't believe that. In my heart, I believe that there's a reason why we're here. And if there isn't a reason, then we should give ourselves one. Right? That and that's about better in the world. Isn't that and the it's easy to say now where you know, you're a decorator, you've got like, your, your life's okay, you're not scrambling for food. It's terrible. Like, you know what I mean? But, but yeah, like, yeah, we're, we're relatively well, we're closed. Yeah, sure. If you take it back to maybe a society in which we're, we're competing for food or we're competing for shelter or whatever, 
wouldn't it then revert We're in that back? society, right? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, right. It reverts back to, okay, well, I'm actually bringing more to the table. I, I should get more back, you know? So, and I, that's, Some the, people, that's, that's the situation brother, we live in we're, now. We're live, yes, exactly. I was just about to say, that's it's what we're living in. Because what I'm and it isn't I working. Then now but brother, think. it isn't working because if you look around you mm. and you see that that, that in, is an operation on every level across the globe, you can see where it's detrimental to a large of course, majority of people. Yeah, by definition, they're going to Let's bring the hierarchies down. I don't and, think they can And what down, this gentleman, though. no, this gentleman was saying earlier on, and what you was debating mm. about, would it would it be good if everyone was equal on that level? If we gave ourselves the opportunity just to find out yeah. where we could go from an equal kind of footing, where we're not saying, well, actually, we got, we're better, aren't we? Let's face it, we've done more, we know more, blah, blah. Yeah. Forget all that, because children are children. And, yeah. and if you can be an adult, right, you can be an adult, but you may not know as much as the adult next to you. That doesn't mean you're valued any less. I know you know that, I know you know that, I know you feel that. But what I'm saying is, let's not stop there with that understanding. Let's not stop there and just say, well, actually, we, but we've got to be pragmatic, we've got to live in the real world, and we understand that the, the money makes the world go around. Why? Because one motherfucker made money, yeah. right, so they could do the sort. They made the money, they made the gold, they took that, they, they made it work for them, and now we are slaves to it, whether we agree to it or admit it or not, we are, but none of us are free. We're going on like, this is a free, so this is not freedom, brother. This is, this is freer than somewhere in one of my country where I'm from or whatever, but this ain't freedom as you know. Know it, or as I, I regard yeah, it. I see what you're saying. In that case, freedom, freedom's impossible to yeah. achieve. Let me, let, me give, let me tell you why. In order to make yeah, money, right? Yeah, like, Depends what kind of freedom you're talking universal. about. I don't think money was in, invented to slow this over. No, sorry, just, no, it's, no, just no, yeah. no. it's just a means of, of you know, exchanging goods. You could use whatever. It initially, it might have been, brother. Yeah, but but like, once, I, once the banking system got hold of it, and, and certain names that I don't need to mention, perhaps, got involved yeah. and made it what it is today, this is the outcome. There are certain people, you know, JP Morgans, your Rothschilds, your Rockefellers, them people there, brother. Yeah. Them people there. If you look at the history and see what they're behind in terms of what wars have been created, who's earning money from the munitions factory, why they think suffering is a good thing, why they think division is a good thing, then we'll get now, closer to the truth. Listen, even, even before all of that, money, right, is a product of output. A country has to produce output in order to make money for to sell it, right? Output is a function of human capital, well, sorry, uh, labor and capital. Human labor. In other words, money can only really be made. There are other ways of making it, but in its most basic form, can only really be made at the expense of using other human beings. Do you believe as, we need money? Do you believe we need money to, to exist in a in a technological advanced world where no one? No, I, I, we just have some sort of intermediary that okay. just says, no, 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 I can exchange. Okay, should we work on that? Then? And I'm a whatever. I can exchange my. Service. We need some kind of currency. But can yeah, that serve? Money. Will that serve? Will that service enable me? Okay, brother, listen to. I work on your house for six weeks, grafting, nine to seven every day. You go to the hospital and you do a bit of surgery, four hours a day you come home. You get untold much more money than me a week. Now, in terms of your equality, let's say this. I decorate your house for six weeks, you do surgery on, my, on me for, for whatever. Can I, can I, after my decorating, can I go and have a, an elite type of holiday in Bali, the same as you're going to do? Or do I have to go to fucking Costa del Sol? Well, it depends on how we all value the service that you provide. And that's what we're talking about. about. His, his service. And how you value those two yeah. And how we value it. Right. Because we can have our own system. Right? Can I just say yeah. at this point? What you, what you do, I think it's not that way a holiday you're entitled to go. Is it you're entitled to have a, yeah. you, you and your children yeah. entitled to have a free, yes, free health service? Yes, bro. Entitled to free education yes. the best of yes where, absolutely. where you go on holiday yeah. is immaterial yes. really but yeah. it's it's about that's not the point that's here. the point you, you see you I mean? said oh god what did you say uh, you said not everyone's equal uh, we're not all born no, in but, terms of like. But that we are is a power. We're born equal. That right? is. We're no, 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 that's, yes, yeah, that's what you're We're no all, did, none of us are born equal, I agree with but that. in I agree. law we are equal. Therefore you cannot enslave someone for not being as intelligent as you, and that means you would be entitled 
to work on his house for six weeks and that your children are guaranteed in a, their constitutional in that country best education. Right. And I there is no I fully agree with that, but I think China. it's a should. So we should Before value intelligence like, as we value strength no, and whatever. It's, it's, but, but it's, it's not can practical. I just say, can I just bring in some... Uh, I've because always, I've always been like this way. Yeah, it's been law, called, though. That's I, the thing that's practical. I've been you known won't value... Okay, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. my brother. No, 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 human rights. I've been known as uh, is it utopian? Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of a utopian. Yeah, I think, yeah. But I totally believe that it's possible. I totally believe that we've been led to believe that it's impossible. Yeah. That we could not have a world where everybody has. But you yourself, you should have more, you, you should have more benefit if he's being a surgeon. I, I genuinely believe that. There's yeah. a larger investment. Wait, no, let's stop. You, you yourself. 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 Oh, they are not me being rewarded and, you and everybody. For your we're a part of the, we're the same sort. It's not about that. We may think it's not about the same surgeon doesn't agree. It's nice, it's nice to but it's more so like it. I'll tell he you does because he's worked harder. I went to Peru yeah, about education, four years ago. Sacrifice. And I don't know if you've ever heard of this so yes, called ayahuasca. But that surgeon <laughs> is not therefore allowed to vote I had for like him three weeks to make sure his wage increase, to make sure his national health service. I agree with that. I don't know what to say except for try, see, and experience. That's what that means. You know what is the problem of this discussion? I think it's, it's just not, it's very hard to Sorry, darling. Like, I, I, I love what you're saying, because you're saying that we shouldn't... Because we place intelligence as the thing that propels in society. We, we, we say this is what is valued. If you're intelligent and you can get this so such job, we'll pay you much more money than someone who is, you know, can only use uh, their bodies, you know, meaning labor, things like that. Which is kind of arbitrary. It's just whatever we think, you know, furthers society. And it would be nice to say, okay, whatever, every, humans are all equal and then we're, you know, we're paid equally, but practically no one, no one's going to run with, with You're that. right, and that's why we get rid of it. Like but we wouldn't live, labor. if I see we someone who's live. just... We wouldn't, it won't work here, it can't work with this, it can't. It, it just can't work it just, with because it's it. been made not to. So, no, no, because you basically, it appears that you're presenting a kind of non-dualistic viewpoint of which kind of respect for each other and uh, sharing the resources of the world is the only way to uh, spiritually grow. Another alternative would be... There's plenty of ways, but that's yeah, one of them. Yeah. If it wasn't for capitalism, you wouldn't have got to that point. If it wasn't for you capitalism, wouldn't have been able to fly we wouldn't be so fucked up. No, no, you wouldn't have been able to fly yeah. to get... You would have to so make no, no, slaves. Wait, 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 Look at us. Where's yeah, spiritual yeah. freedom I, that was in being like, a slave? Kind of no, I mean, you would have gone not. to Brazil and had ayahuasca. I would have. Why was capitalism? Because you had to have money to fly the flight. What were African people doing like 8,000 years ago to get from Africa to America? They weren't using capitalism, were they? They were using boats. Well, I don't think you would have okay, gone like that. But anyway, no, 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 but the point, the, the point that I'm making is this, is that actually another alternative is the existence that we are having at the moment, in this moment, is perfect in the sense that it gives you an opportunity to transcend it in a non-dualistic way. But actually, what you're proposing is, is probably trying to control it, to make it the utopia that you want. No, no, is well, what, what, I'm uh, asking what him. he's talking yeah, about, uh, what he's talking about uh, is uh, the inequality. And uh, what, uh, for example, if I ask all of you, what uh, distinguishes race and class, which is the distinction between race and class? Can any of you answer this question? I'm, I'm sorry, but I, just, I feel that you totally hijacked what I was asking this person. <laughs> no, no, but this and is I, the truth I, I, I know you've got your voice with it, but you, I actually want to hear his response. If you do not analyse what is class, you turn around in a circle. For example... I, okay, I'm, I'm for sorry, exa I'm, let me I'm not, I don't want you to, to listen to what you're saying. I do want to listen to what your response to that is, because otherwise it's going to be lost completely. Can you just give me a quick recap? So the idea is that you, you're, you're, it seems to me that you would like society to change, to meet that equality that spiritually you uh, sense. And the other alternative is actually we've got a perfect situation, it always has been perfect, from a, from a spiritual basis and a material basis. 
cases that gives us the opportunity to transcend it to get to the non-dualistic position that from where we are now, where we are now, or from whenever we were. So, and in fact, some 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 degrees, actually, what capitalism has done in this world has given. In one way, it sucks people in, and in another way, it gives people opportunity to do that. So, right. and know. also, good point as well. And also, it gives people a chance to see how bad yes, things exactly, are. Yeah. And, and yeah. Like, you know, yeah. I mean, look, I think we, as as beings, we, we, we can do literally anything. We can come out of anything. You know, look around the world, see certain civilizations that have really been put through the mill, come out the other end. All right, there's only yeah, a few. Yeah, but you're talking only about the, the first world. Which yeah. is uh, the uh, the northern northern countries? I'm talking about uh, a situation that is world on a world scale, because if we keep on keeping uh, uh, south, you know, the periphery of the world is the global south, into poverty, into slum, into destitution, mm -hmm. dire uh, poverty, disease, famine, we even if we are privileged. Uh, according to, on a world scale, we are privileged according to, to the others. reasonable, without any reason, we are privileged according, compared to them who are manufacturers, we are clocks now, we have gone on a it's scale been made mobility. That it's been made that, I mean, yeah. that, you know, the but subcontinent has been You have to stuff. understand that this kind of world, which is a world of slum, of oceans of plastic, will bite us back because there are continuously new, new strands of epidemics and we are vulnerable even if we live in the global north yeah, yeah. we are vulnerable to these epidemics yeah, yeah, we're, we're that's why it's important to understand why class has nothing got to do with race because you can have equality in race look at the kids going into the elite, oh, darling, darling. hacking each other, but, yeah, but they're all equal, you know they're all class, You know the class and race that you're talking of, even these are labels they're that man has up. made, yeah, they're, they're made up. I'm not interested in labels, I'm interested they are, they are labels, though. Don't fall into bias, go for principle, on principle, race, let me finish, on principle, race is an equalizer. Look, because look at the poor people sleeping in the street, you see, all kinds of races, they talk to each other, they fraternize. So they are equal, the same rich people. They are equal with the elite of Africa, with the elite of China, of wherever. Okay. In class, you do not have equality whatsoever. What he's talking about, is talking about the first world and the stratification of class. Yeah. It's not like that. You have a dominant class and a subordinate class. There is no equality whatsoever. You have equality in race, not absolutely no equality in class. Class is a major divider between those who have the means of Are you production. A or a teacher? No, 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 and well, what they don't have any. So imagine, you know, the gentleman was just here, he said something about uh, if everyone had to vote behind closed doors, uh, would anyone, you know, Vote one way or would everyone sort of neutralize? Say, for example, everyone, it was this utopia and everyone paid each other equally and it wasn't based That's on. not a utopia. No, no, no. We really didn't have money. No, no, it's not <laughs> money. It's in the world that you're saying that okay. uh, you as a decorator should be valued. Or yeah, on, in the, on this it's the same scale. Yeah. Do you think behind closed doors everyone would agree? Because yeah. surely uh, if one person disagrees, that person then will get one up on the next person You're and then probably, it's going to sort of propagate Which is around. why in a democracy you don't have closed doors. Yeah, yeah but yeah. I just think even the mentality yeah. of people will be... Yes, uh, will you know, so but then you'll you know, be exposed. That is what brilliant. it is. What yeah, just but then yeah, you get a one up on shit. So if I then use yeah, you my... Think if you I, can, I use my skill but if you declare you're, that you're a monster to the world, the rest of the community then can take... Uh, yeah, this is assuming 99% are on board and not saying uh, put them in prison. If no, you're a monster, you go yeah, to prison. This is assuming the 99% are if you want to be, and then the 1% is trying to get one up. But it's not really going to work. It's going to work. Do, do, like do, you know, do you know, we, 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 you, you guys were talking earlier on bringing the numbers of the population in and all that kind of thing. Yeah. I want to say this, listen. I'm only one being, right, as, and you are and yeah. all that. But honestly, th this, is, this is how I believe it should work. I don't harm you. I don't force you to do anything you don't want to do. Mm. Everything is regarded on that level 
and we live. Yeah, and course. we work with each other and we grow and we build and we expand. Yeah, but why we are going towards the right? Why the right has won so much power in Europe? No, I'm not why? talking about the right. I'm not, I'm not the, the, the right, the right, the right well, it's, it's an old story. You go to very small details, you go nowhere. All right, mate, my darling. Maybe, maybe, look, maybe that's how it is. This is nice, but I think that we live in a world where everything's random. So we start random. You're born as you're born, I'm born in London. I may have be around more resources, I may have more skills or more values. That creates a disparity in which that if we do have this equal world, I'm more inclined I'm I have a greater chance of thinking, oh no, I've got more resources, why am I gonna forfeit these? Or oh I've got this skill, Your why am I going world to forfeit would be this? better world. Right no, now, I, 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 I we'd have, strive towards you'd have this. a better experience than that. You'd have a, that right now, if you're cleverer than the other, uh, if you've added to the community more than the other person, yeah. you're actually punished. You're not rewarded. And you, what your punishment is, is di division in society. What the heck the division, uh, your punishment is, is feeling guilty about actually having wealth, knowing that there are people that don't. What your punishment is, is having to breathe air which is polluted. The people that are that, contributing to society are like. not rewarded. They're punished. But why would I... In a society where in the law we are equal, then that person that contributes more to society will actually be rewarded with a healthy society, with a healthy, wealthy community, with air they can breathe, without war, without slavery. That's what a reward is. Yes, but right now, if you are contributing to society as a surgeon, in actual fact, you're still living in absolute misery. Because you know as that surgeon, when you open up the newspaper, you're going to read about the horrors in the world in that. How can you enjoy your really rewards? Good, really good How can you enjoy your rewards easily, knowing nice, when slavery? Nice Quite nice easily. Just exactly. take lots of really drugs. Really good point, but exactly. That is exactly. That, that is how I feel, and that is what is happening. You can easily ignore easily. it and block it out. But, but you can't right. do it. Mate. But is it You're delusional. Right. Right. There's not yeah. enough yeah. drugs in the no, world no, to lie about but then, that. If you're, if, you're, if you're never going to get it, what are, what's the aim? But even if you did get it, it doesn't take much for one community to become more like it and, just, then, just and, then, and, and then and then and then yeah that right, in your head and then it just everybody's just around, gonna really. be horrible no, you know, no, just but one. the reality and is and then one opposes and in a democracy what would happen, what would happen you would need person. resources to go and kill people en masse you are aware war costs money aren't you yeah. are you aware of that because exactly be the most expensive business in the world is war so how is that little group of people in a democracy actually then going to murder everyone else because they can't because you need to have weapons to do that and in a democracy that wouldn't happen and all so the press is like a fictitious world it's very good you know, many rather than the world that we live in which is war and murder right, bro, many years i've come now. here and every so listen. often a fight breaks out every so often once every year i might say but what happens here is that you know they don't wait for the police the people jump in and break out exactly up. Yeah. and it's the same the way as what you're saying works. if we're in a society where people are just exactly. standard you know we're used to getting on and helping Right? And you see someone broke out in a fight and all that kind of thing. Are you going to just watch or are you going to go and stop? Of course. Stop? That's the there point. You go. And no, if, no, if we stop. You've taken an idea of this place. Is his like point. We understand the culture of this place. Maybe a park down, like, I don't know, how many miles down? They don't. And say the majority there, they just want to egg on a fight. You know, Most how, fights, how, how can people you, intervene. How can you. That's exactly what How happens you spread in those ideology. I'll tell you how, right, right. And, and, it, and it ain't gonna happen overnight. You're determined it's not for the world to burn. The thing is, because it's gonna be all right for you for the world burning. The thing is, this you all got that wealth to make sure that you can pay for it not to see it. Where anymore. we are in the West, which now. is what you said five minutes ago. The rich can't afford not to see it anymore. That's exactly what you're sure. contributing. We, 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 we've, been, we've been getting here drip, drip fed year by year for a long, 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 long time. And I, I'm not just talking about during Victorian and Tudor, yeah. I'm talking about a long time to run to run to afford Babylon, you know, to make it all, all this disappear. stuff has been going on. There's been so many different stages of, of where we have been as people on this planet. Okay, 
I do, I do run the gauntlet of going off in oh, tangents, that's backyard. me, right? Not in my do backyard. you know, for example, yeah. that we, I mean, would you accept that we are so light historically about history? Would you, would you see that? Do you even know that? Yeah, of course. And what part of history are you aware of that they've lied I don't know, because, you know, what I know could be a lie. Okay. But I'm sure things will be fabricated and even like lost. Not, 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 not just, not just. I'm talking about the reason why history is hidden is big, is so that... Uh, the elite. Yeah, can I just? I don't want to, he is never going to want to stand you. Until, I'm asking. I'm hang really on, hang on. I'm just, I'm just making a point. A, I'm he is never going to understand you until he's lived the repression that you're describing. And one day you don't he will know. live. You just you simply don't one day know. That. You know what, brother? Then he'll understand you. There is a big truth in that. There then is. he'll understand he you. But also, no, you don't it's an but also exactly, exactly, and safe for him. Exactly. We could, exactly. As much as strong as I feel I've what you're you saying, seconds, so I've you, seen with my own yeah, eyes yeah. how people can get something and just it begins to transform the way they think. He needs to live I've it. I've seen first. that. And he will do. I tell you what. He hasn't got a choice. As a person, as a person, he hasn't got a choice. His his energy is a beautiful energy, and I'm giving and I'm just going with that man. It's like, I literally but one just day you today. he will be forced to live it. <laughs> then he'll understand day. everything. Everything. Well, you know I'm the ruling one percent. I will that be gone day. with you. We, we, we have been lied to, right? <laughs> we have been lied to for so long that history, and the reason why I'm saying it's really important, is because we, we, where we are today is because they've blocked out history. It's the, the elites, the people that organise uh, historians, scholars, universities, all okay. these. These are the people that. If you like, can contain all the truth. And what's the evidence? Please? All right. Oh, the evidence. I'll give you. I'll give you a really good thing to go and check out. Really good thing. We was told that the pyramids are the oldest structures that man who has been building created. They're putting, a, and they say that they were tombs and all the rest of it for the pharaohs. Well, the historians, uh, so Suwazi, whatever his name is, and the Egyptologists, and and the whole. Fun and Jeff Bezos. Probably him. Another, another now, what I'm saying is. They're telling us that we haven't been around for too long and ain't been doing much for too long. All of a sudden, there's this place in Turkey called Gobekli Tepe, and they found this place, and it's 12,000 years old, and it's got structures that were built and buried by the people that built it, so that as a time capsule, we could find it, as we have now, 40, 50 years ago, to show us that man wasn't primitive 12,000 years ago. Man was not, he was going around the globe, he was, he was producing maps, he was, uh, producing temples and structures okay. that we look at today, me as a builder and a decorator, I look at today and I think there's no way, I don't care what you're telling me, there's no way man built that shit back in the day, 12,000 years ago, without advanced knowledge of some form, geometrically and all the rest of it. Okay. This stuff is incredible. If you looked at like the, the, the pyramids and how they geometrically line up with the Sirius star so system. This is this is all fact. Have a look. Go and no, check. No, 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 but I'm saying so. Yeah, it's reported. By historians. Ah, ah. Now, the historians will tell you that what I'm telling you is bullshit. The historians will tell you that then nothing precedes Egypt, like I've just told you what does. Gobekli Tepe. Remember that name? Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. Go and check it out and see for yourself. Okay, and it, so what's their agenda? The, what's their agenda? To keep us down and controlled and not free. Yeah, but, I mean, okay, what, what do they gain from it? Your consciousness, your mind, so are you your conscious? experience. So is it very similar to a Scientology belief? No. But no, similar. Well, and but, but how there are all there, there are many beliefs that kind of weave but what through do you each gain other. From believing A or B. I mean, what, how has it changed you? Okay, A or B. I, I, it depends what A and B so is. So you thought that the pyramids were the oldest, or you thought this place was the second? Okay, that, what I'm saying is they were just examples. Yeah. Really, like I said to you. We're going off subject. Sorry, my brother. Yeah, I'm just going to finish this point. Yeah. Yeah. Just, they, uh, they, they were just they were just examples of where we've been lied to, and, and why it's important that we realise why the lie was created. We have been taken and moulded to become a limited conscious being that is not very empathic, yeah. not very sharing or giving, and no desire to yeah. go it's down that route. Is the original sin? No, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. There is religion, no original sin. If you religion, believe in religion, I'll leave it with no, you. No, 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 she didn't mean that. Oh. She meant that's, in, that's one of the things that's enforced religion upon people. Religion knocks down humanity, knocks yeah. down people. Yeah. 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 Creative, Separated us, creative make us hate each other, divide us. I think it's very easy to see historians or some, you know, 
any sort of brother, bureaucratic why don't instinct you then? Why as, don't as, you? as something like other than it is. Wait, brother, why because you're, you not, because you're not in that, but, that system. Brother, I'm in, in the system. I'm in the system. Like bankers are all evil or doctors are all evil. But when you actually... It's made up of people. There are some people... Let him say something. Let him say something. Let him say something. We're doing it each other, right? That's what I'm saying. is that You could have, okay, the body of decorators, right? And then someone can come across who's ignorant of you know what decorators do and say you know they've got this ulterior motive to destroy everyone's houses blah, 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 because they've seen a few people destroy some houses yeah. and they would be wrong but they're based they're just seeing you know <laughs> a follows b and they're all done by these decorators yeah, therefore yeah. all decorators are inherently bad, bad. You know? but then i think it's because we don't understand it we see it as you know this unified force whereas the private education system educates into the minds of people you just don't know that the working uh, that they are in the superiority of what they are because of their education they got and with that superiority they're entitled to the horrors to making decisions morally right and entitled to make horrible decisions upon the world that's what the private education system teaches the children of our country and other uh, other countries can I just, you and they can teach children right? to hate themselves and hate their own communities and justify enslavement and genocide and we have an example i believe of it right here <laughs> which, did you go to which private school did you go to didn't go to private school Pardon? didn't go to private school which school did you go to then it's confidential you didn't go to private school it was confidential I didn't but you came school. from wealth. It's not for public. Knowledge. I didn't come from wealth either. But it's nice that you, you got said that posh accent. How? Well, because it's where I live, and that has nothing to do with how. You like, happen to live in a rich area. No, no, yes. my, my girlfriend talks exactly the same. She's not posh. To do with that. I have friends who are posh. I disagree. I don't is, believe you're being yeah. honest. I am being honest. I don't believe you. It's fine. Believe because what you want. the way you're thinking and educated. The way I'm thinking. Exactly yes. the way of encouraging enslavement and horrors on this world this and that comes from one Asia. area the difficulty right you know. if you were ruling the world you're making a lot of judgments about you just people. wipe out i never said i, I want to rule the world you've Bible already made get rid of from your first I comment if you've already made the mistake I said if i never said i would want to I rule the world I said what if. i said in a democracy we'd know exactly where yeah. we're all educated posh, and all the rich. wealth that we actually have because we like to deny these things to look because we believe that maybe we'll be judged for being wealthy. Well, that's what you're apparently you're doing. You isn't and it? we'd be able to do that that's in a democracy. Doing. You wouldn't need to hide. But well, you're making a judgment. In a democracy, yeah, we can be proud right about what we are and where we came from. Judge, yeah, you judge, came from judge, wealth. Judge, judge, didn't judge, come from judge. wealth. And your attitudes came from wealth. It doesn't make sense. And your attitude came from rich people. It does and that's what exactly contributed to what you are today. It's not, and you're happy with building that, sorry. It's not, it's not his or anyone's fault. That, you know, I no, it's not his fault. He didn't design the world. But what he's doing is making sure the world is still enslaved yeah, and it's no, still happening that way that's what he's doing it's not your fault it's right? not your fault not seeing it that, that way. you We're don't care it that way. it's, it's not, not your fault, fault. But, but that's exactly what you are it does doing happen. it does happen to a lot that of people is what wealth they get does. kind of wealth makes I don't want it denies you your humanity I don't want to be well no, of denied you I your humanity in a democracy we'd all have the wealth and we'd all with that wealth access to humanity and the tools of humanity because without that you make monsters of people without that you deny people the basic rights of humanity and he's glib because he doesn't know of the things that we are talking about but i said when you grow up you will learn because it doesn't matter where you live it will still come and find you and that's exactly what will happen. And no amount of location or wealth can protect you from the horrors which are going to happen on this world unless we do make changes. And those changes are a fully functioning democracy where the spirit is, can grow and where human beings are not repressed because they are poor. And in that world, we'll only contribute to a horrible world. But you're happy to make sure that
people are enslaved. You're happy for a world to become a better place by individuals having power and access to the tools of power. And that is a healthy way to think. Your way Good and is an literal, <laughs> it's literally making, making more horrors on the world. You're happy with that. His wealth will protect him from that. But not isolate. Him from that. Yeah. But I'll not isolate him. Well. Well. He can right. never Don't isolate worry. from that. Doesn't matter how glib and arrogant you want to be, it will not protect you from the horrors which are happening in the world. Because you can't protect yourself from global warming. You were global warming. Oh, are you aware of global warming? And do you believe it's man-made? Uh, yeah. And it will. Do you believe it will destroy your community you live in? Not mine. I'm gonna have my own little enclosed capsule. It will destroy your community. Oh, Did you know though the global warming thing? That's interesting because someone told me it's not called global warming, right? That we're not actually that it's not actually happening the way it's been presented. What what's happening is that the Earth goes through these changes every 50. What 60 is happening with global warming is that you have a very few rich people producing all the CO2, man-made CO2, into the environment. That is what's happening. Yeah, and you know why it. they're doing you that? Not, they're not producing it and no one's using it. We're using it. And did you have choice? You've got a telephone. Did You've you got a have TV. choice? You've got a car. But you had a... You're using see, all of these All things. you can do, mate, is be glib and pathetic. Well, that's but what you can't do you is can actually do listen to people that are actually pricking up are an you argument. Are using any of the energy? And what? Where did we go that the rich person can make the decision are that the petrol it? engine it's going to be the choice we use of all of us. Not to use it, they won't produce oh, it's them. easy being pathetic, isn't it? And glib. It's so easy. But what is really hard is saying statements which will actually help the world and end CO2. That's hard. You only call it's me easy glib when to I be glib and pathetic. But what it's hard to do is say, where is the CO2 coming from? Who makes the profit? We don't profit from the CO2 that is man made. We die from the CO2, which is man-made. They own it and they have enforced it upon us. That's what's happening. Do they force you yes, to use your car? Yes, there is a cycle they force which you to is use going your phone. And speaking. Are you incapable of not speaking for one moment? Are you? Yeah, but Good, you then give me a moment to speak. Because yes, there is a cycle and that does happen. But what is also happening right now is that very few individuals own all the oil and those few individuals are dictating that's what the oil we must use. And if you don't use it, there will be punishment on you for that. If you don't use your car, someone comes with a gun to your head. What Sorry, are you being glib and pathetic? Use more energy. Sorry, are you being glib and pathetic? Are you being defensive? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, good. If you can't answer Condemning it, then just say it. Oh, if I can't answer know. the point of a glib know. and pathetic human being, you know, I have an issue, no, do I? Wrong, or is it maybe the person doesn't give a no, shit about no, life? I, I don't know that actually if has if I don't a problem. Know, if I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. I don't know, I've got know. to listen to glib and pathetic people. It's my problem, not your crappy education. Private, crappy, really? yeah, your crappy up. education. Really, really. What education you Where got? Was I it was then? crappy. Where was I Whatever you learned from the people around you was crappy, and it made you a monster. But a monster happy with with being it. You enjoy it. You love it, and you damn well profit from it. No, CO2 is produced by the few to imprison the majority. That's what it does, because right now, the CO2 levels are destroying all life on Earth. Who's um, producing the CO2? Is it the magic fairies? It's a genuine question. Who's producing it? If you don't know the answer to that, not maybe who, she's actually not, going no, bloody no, well learn something. Who, who is drilling for oil or who's who's mining for coal? Who is Very producing the CO2? I'm being pathetic. Who is producing the CO2? make it clever, mate. All it means is you're pathetic and glib. That's all that means. Excuse me, gentlemen, ladies, I'm going to get a drink. All right, nice speaking to you. All the best. Yeah, being pathetic and glib isn't going to change the fact that CO2 is destroying this world. Look into the fact who profits from that. That will change the world.
You're happy for people to live in misery and horror. You think you'll find that that is a bit psychopathic. And in actual fact, the majority think that's quite sick. Psychopath, monster. Yeah, you, you think being glib is psychopath. Rich, when somebody's talking about uh, mass horror, you think being glib and pathetic. No. In that situation, isn't psychopathic. Is Demonstrate some humanity. The CO2. Demonstrate some humanity. And it's upon us Demonstrate to reduce some our humanity, CO2 mate. Emissions. Come on. That's Demonstrate some of your humanity. Let's see the level of your humanity. Come on. Prove your humanity. Go on. I'm not sure what you're demonstrating. So prove your humanity. Can I speak, please? I've I asked you to prove your humanity. Let's hear you prove it. I think that we emit CO2. No, I'm asking you a question. Prove your humanity right now. What makes you human? Come on. Let's hear it. What makes you a human being? Come on. Let's hear it. Eyes, ears, lungs. You think that makes the base, that makes you an animal, I doesn't finished. it? I haven't finished. Good. Let's hear something that isn't glib and pathetic. I Let's hear an answer to a genuine question. What makes me human? What makes you? What is your humanity based on? My humanity. And that therefore human? Yeah. Oh, I suppose I'm just genetically human. That's no, it. you're genetically an animal, aren't you? Yeah, but I thought and I'm asking you a question. Yeah, I know. What I, is the con what is the if, construct if you that makes you human? And compared it to that of Are a you going to be glib all your life? Is that how you're hoping to get through your life, mate? By being glib. No, I'll ask you again. What is I defining can... your humanity? Come on, name me three things. It's an easy question. I know. So you're I... a human being. Yeah. I'm Let's right. hear it. Well, I'm trying. You so, are trying, as I said, that is true. My genetic material would suggest that I was a human. No, if you suggest you're an animal. Yeah, and yes. humans are what? animals. Yes, so what's the difference between no, no, animals? No, we are not animals. We are animals. What's the difference between animals? I'm asking you, yeah. what is your humanity based on? What makes you human? Because I, I, it's a, it's a you can't question. even answer a basic question. Well, there's lots to it. So I'm a human because I, I know there's lots to it. Yeah, so you're asking so for I'm a simple So I'm asking answer. you to start. Yeah, Let's trying. hear your start. I'm, trying to. I'm not. I don't need to know that you're an animal. I already bloody know you're an animal. Exactly. More, like, so what makes any... you human? I'm, Come on, are you asking let's hear it. Like grandiose and sententious. Like I'm human because I am a human being. Define what you no think as makes human. you That's your it. humanity. That's it. That's it. What? Go on. That's it. What? As I said, being an animal makes you human. My genetic material is similar to all the humans here, and it, it def we have defined what it is to be human. That's why I'm not a monkey. I'm not a rat, and whatever. I'm a human. So you think so humanity and all these things you are think, extra? Anyway. You think. If you say if you say if you say humanity is about oh doing good onto others blah 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 you make decisions it make don't you? It doesn't make sense. You it's... wake up and make decisions. Yes. Yeah. And what do you base those decisions on? Uh, I would say I base my decisions on what you humanity might... do you employ upon your decision making? Utility, what humanity? Utility, you know? I get food. I search for food. I, I need. No, you don't. Your parents do that. No, but what I'm saying is, you can't. I'm glad you didn't try and deny that. You can't define humanity as. Like, I'm not. I'm asking you to define the very fundamentals of your humanity. What it makes to be human. And because just, what I've been talking about on this platform is the very quintessential of what it is to be a human being and part of the human race. Just genetic. And our humanity is demonstrated in caring. And how do we care for human beings rather than dismissing human beings? because okay. they're going to die anyway. By that same, I don't think by that same criteria, you have any humanity. By that same criteria, and you definitely demonstrated right now a child that you don't understand human. your own humanity. If your own criterion would, would, would prevent a brain-dead human from being a human, a child from being a human, because they can't employ those values yeah. Yeah, so they wouldn't, they wouldn't. That's why we human. call them children and not adults. Or not That's why we don't let them vote, mate. That's why we don't let children vote. That's why we don't put them in prison when they commit a crime. That's yes, that's human. exactly what I'm doing. Are they not human? Welcome to the world human? called humanity. Are they human? You're still trying to catch up, aren't Are you? Are they human? A human being. 
I'm asking you what to define your humanity. No, you said, the reason you why we don't let children asked, work in asked, work is because they're children. Asked, the reason why we don't let them go to war is because they are children. Are you aware that children don't go to war in this country? Are you aware that children don't vote? Are you aware. aware of these things? I am aware. You don't seem so. No, I've had to point it out to you. You didn't have to. And yet, I've had to have to point they don't go to war we know as this. well. I said that. Do I always have to point the bleeding obvious out to no, you? No, you don't. Because it does seem right now our relationship is me pointing out the obvious. What? And I've asked you a question. I said. What do you base your humanity on? You've not been able to answer it. No, you said You've it, described you said. to me some evolutionary, evolutionary process. You said, what, that to what me it is obvious. I said, what does it mean? I'm asking you, you what, makes you, what you think you your know. humanity is based on. And you can't answer that basic question. And I said, like I said to the gentleman before, you've had little experiences of life. And you'll never understand no until idea. those what he was talking about. You'll never understand him until you've had those experiences. You don't even know that children are not in voting. I know that. No, you don't know me, though. You said that. Ch uh, ch what? Children are not human beings, dust. That's what he said. Are that. you thinking that? No, are you that. thinking they're not entitled to be human? No, of course not. That's why we don't let them vote. Because they're still forming to be two human ears beings. And one mouth. Pardon? Two ears and one mouth. You point the obvious out again, or are you being glib again? If you're going to be glib, as I said, your life is going to be quite miserable and horrible. Life's good. And also, your life on other human beings, more important than just you, other you being glib will make sure and guarantee the misery of all a lot of other human beings, which you've said you won't ever have to meet or read about. That's great. Your, your being glib has made other people miserable. And it's great that you will never have to experience the horrors that you've helped contribute. Yeah, go away, think about what... I'm gonna head yeah, off. go away and have a good think about what your humanity is and how you base your decisions on your humanity. Then come back and answer that basic question. I'll be very interested in what you've got to say. And stop saying that people and animals are the same. Genetically, as in, as in humans and animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's not get onto that discussion. Because that means it can be lazy. I'm not doing any real thing. Let him do some bloody work for the first time in his life. Humans, humans Go and learn what humanity is and what yours is and come back to me. Humanity, Go and do some work. That'd be great to hear. Term. There's no, there's no what is your definition? Your and definition? what do you define? Your I'm talking, I've been talking about it for the last two last this four is hours. Open your ideas. ears, mate. That's why you can't humanity. hear. Because you're still learning to be a human being. Animals you're still learning that. So come back when you've learned it. And you. then we can have a conversation. Until then, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. From your Man say it straight, man don't listen to BBC, man don't listen to ITV. Listen!